Welcome, welcome to Spurs Kings TV. It's Tuesday. Yes, we're late, but we're late for a good reason, right? We'll get into the reason why we're late in a minute. However, Ash, are you well? I'm very well, man. All is good in the world of football at the moment. Um, a certain team drew today, so... Yes. Um... Reason why we're late. <laughs> <laughs> Puts a little smile on my face. Um, they seem very tearful, very tearful as well. I'll I tell you what, right? I think what's peed me off in the last 48 hours of this game happening is how everyone just suddenly hadn't watched Bayern Munich all season. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I think the only team that's probably watched Bayern Munich this season, or at, see, at least kind of, you know, it's thrown out there, is West Ham. Yeah. Because they've probably watched Leverkusen and gone, oh, crap. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't definitely. think people realise how good Leverkusen really are. <laughs> exactly, exactly that, man. I, I called a draw, and everyone was like, draw? What are you talking about? But well, it is what it is, man. Everyone's like, oh, their defence is crap. Look, they've got Eric Dyer, blah, blah, blah. I said, bro, stay calm. Stay calm. But, yeah, we move, man. We move. However, this show is about today what we're kind of cementing at the moment. We could be playing these nights next year. <laughs> well, <laughs> if we get this far. <laughs> but yeah. we're going to have, we, theoretically, the way things are going, it is looking really good for us. So, great, great win. Me and you have been out and about on streams at the moment, not our own. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. But let's get into it. But let's bring out our guest. Let's bring out the man that we thought could help us tonight. We've got West Ham to review, and we've also got Nottingham Forest to review. Probably more Forest than West Ham, right? But let's bring him out. He he helped us in the past with some of our logos. He's been on this channel before. It's been a while actually since he last came on. But let's give a round of applause to Ben Kaufman. <laughs> Good evening, boys. Good evening. Good to have How are you? Work. Are you well? Yeah, doing well. It's been a long week. Been a good couple of games tonight, and. It's always fun. Always fun to spend some time with two of my boys, uh, the good people in the chat, and one. And yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun show. And let's welcome our second guest quickly into into to play. Usually a lot in the chat, usually watching us all the time. But we thought we'd invite him on this time and hopefully give his opinion on Spurs and not worry about too much. But Adrian, are you well? <laughs> Can you hear us as well? Oh, yeah, oh. Right. How are we doing, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I'm having phone trouble, but I'm on my laptop, so right. yeah, yes. good evening. Oh, it's good, good to make my, I think, second appearance on these. On yes, these ever, yeah, so yeah, not bad. I'm an exalted company, you know. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, man. Yeah, was it gone before we move on? I just want to say, everyone in the chat, welcome, thank you for joining us. We will now get into it. Um, but big some shout outs while you're there. We can shout out Bryce. I hope you are well. Eltel Cockerell, hope you are well. Kev G's in the house, Tommy G, Philip Hewitt, uh, Rob Belcher, Daryl Bradford, Mickey Wernick. I uh, hopefully I'm not watching these names, but all welcome. Thank you. And everyone who's watching uh and is a silent watcher, thank you for coming along. So Ash. Yes. Right, a lot of people um I'm just going to get into Tommy G's probably said, you know, good show and last word on Spurs. So we've probably been through most of it, but mm. we, we saved the bit. We saved the bit for Spurs Kings TV. It's midget, it's midget. Yeah. So 3 1. Finally scored a goal at White Hart Lane. White Hart Lane. Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Finally yep. scored in the first half. Yep. When it went to 1 all, were you nervous? But explain the game on a whole, how you, how you felt afterwards. You know what? It's it's crazy because um, I felt we were slightly higher up the pitch, in my opinion, um, than usual. And I was looking at it from previous games, and I was thinking, "Am I imagining it?" And I was like, "You know what? I need to I need to actually see it in 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 live detail." So I had a check, and I looked on uh, Sofa Score just to see our positioning, and that's when I noticed. I was like, "Wait, I think we are slightly higher up than usual." And I'm, I'm going to bring up, if I can, I'm going to bring up the actual graphic that I actually saw. Let's see if I can get it up two sets. Um, see if it is. Yes, yeah, here. Cool. If I share my screen. I don't know if you guys can see this yet. Can you see anything? 
No. Hold on, no. hold on. I've got it. I've got it. There you go. Oh. Thank there we you. Go. <laughs> the two centre backs uh, are as usual, but our six, as Basuma is, super high. I've never seen him that high before. Mm-hmm. And um, I could go into previous um, matches where you see him slightly deeper. But yeah, as you can see, he's really close to Son. And then you've got Poro um, quite high up. Johnson, obviously, on one side, and then number 22. And then you've got Werner, super high as well. And even Madison's quite high as well. So I was like, wow, this first half, we're really, like, being aggressive. We're really trying to push them into their own half. Um, so, yeah, that was that was the first thing I really noticed about um, the, the game when we started. But as a result of that, there was lots of spaces. I don't know if you can see my arrow, but these are the spaces where I'm pointing. It That was exposed. So those were the danger areas, and that's what I saw. And especially in the first half, they 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 attacked us a lot. And um, because some of our players, or especially Basuma, were super high, I felt like they had further back to to run or to recover or to sweep up. Obviously, Mickey Van der Ven was there to tidy up as well, and he was able to clean up at certain points. Um, but yeah, I just thought um, we were a little bit higher than usual. That's one thing I, I noticed from when I was watching the actual game. Um, but yeah, man, I just thought overall, we got the job done. They had their threats. We didn't play, you know, it, we played in patches. I said it in uh, last word of Spurs. I said we played in quarters. So first I'd say 22 or 25 minutes, we, we played exceptional. And then the, the last 20 minutes of that half, I think we fell off a bit. We lost concentration and then similar to the second half i felt we played well in the first quarter of that or the first half of the second half and then the other part of that i think we kind of switched off a little bit and we allowed them back in and we made a few mistakes and we and we got a little bit complacent but yeah that's that's what i thought i want to hear what these guys have to say as well cough let's come to you big man ben yes so you were at the game wasn't you I was at the game. I was at the game, and so was Adrian. So you lot yeah. will probably, obviously, and this is the best thing about this, you lot will have a different view to us who watched it on TV. Mm. So how was you feeling in the stadium? What was the atmosphere like? Obviously, I've seen the first half of it going one all, yeah. and then seeing how the second half played out. You've had, obviously, a couple of days to think about it, but yeah. like, how were you feeling at the time, especially when it went one all? First 15 minutes, we played quite well. We were suffocating them really well, making it really difficult for them to come out. Then we, we got the goal, so we looked very, very comfortable in that game. And that, that goal came basically out of nowhere. Um, we'll get on to it with the point of tactics later in the game, but there's so much space between the fullback and the centre defenders. They were they were going to exploit it at some point, and Udoggy uh, didn't think it was a good idea to get back hmm. and they get a goal. But for about 20 minutes, I would say, of that game, Forrest looked really in control of the game. They used their physical presence and we looked very frantic. We were trying to do things overly quickly. In my, uh, and you've seen that from the graph you put up, how high up they were pushed. They were trying to do things too quickly. But that that all leads into the second half. And sees we we need to make this simple now. So he brings on two players you would consider our more simple footballers in Benton Kerr and Hoybier. Yeah. And, Ho- and we'll get on to who we thought our man of the match was. I thought Hoybier was the best player on the park bar bar maybe Mickey van der Ven. You could probably give it to Mickey because of his goal. He did things simply. He came up the pitch, he won the ball, and most importantly, his organisational skills and his leadership skills made other players better which is another reason we'll talk about Timo Werner. Timo Werner had a really good second half because Hoybier would win the ball up really high and immediately lay it into to, to Werner to, and, and to Johnson to exploit those spaces. And that's one of the good things about a Hoybier is he does generally pass the ball forward, whereas someone like a Basuma, you, you, people say that his stats are brilliant in terms of his passing. Most of his passes are sideways and backwards and they're very languid passes was Hoybier gets the ball, passes it quickly and accurately as well. So we kept it really simple and simplicity won the day and some brilliant goals in the game from the boys. But keeping it simple really helped us in that game. And that's what I can see. A lot of people disagree with me about my Hoybier 
um, ramp, thinking I'm a Hoya Bier fanboy. I don't like Hoya Bier, uh, much to the annoyance of our lovely Ellie, but I'll give him his juice. He was the best mm. player on the path on the weekend, and I'll give him his props. Adrian, you know, you obviously wrote the game as well. What changed? Like, was there an element of change that you could sense from the first half to the second half, or was it pretty much we were pretty much on top anyway but we just seem to be our defenders kind of got us out of trouble in the second half good substitutions yep and, and at the right time i i was fuming when they scored and i'm i'm always a free three quarters glass full spurs fan but i was fuming when they scored but Suma didn't get back to cover van der Ven had to go 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 and take the player on and uh you doggy was trotting back because this is where intelligent awareness and positional play comes into any system, knowing when to go, when to get back. You know, you don't always get it right, but you expect to get it right most of the time. So our centre-backs got split, and that created the space for Wood in the middle. Uh, poor goal to concede. Mm. It was a real, it's what angered me. It was such a poor goal to concede. And uh, then, of course, we had the other hot stopping moment. When they nearly chipped the keeper. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, and I'm there and I'm going, and I'm high up in the east end and I couldn't tell if it's going to go in or not. Like, I think, oh no, look, look, this is going to be. We, we, it, it, and then it, it, it wasn't one of them came, that came out of nowhere. Do you think that actually Forrest had seen the car Luna, a lot? He, yeah. he was the one who the ball went off of it for the own goal, wasn't it? Yeah. He was the one who went off for the own goal. And then, and then if that, that didn't top it all, you had Vicaro made that great one-handed save right on the yeah. deck. You know, uh, what would we do with that, that keeper? Yeah. yeah. It was fantastic. But that's second half, different, different, wasn't it? I, I just think, I thought Ben Accor was good, Ben. I wouldn't have praised him up as much as you did. He did do a couple of sloppy passes. Uh, sorry, Hoiberg, sorry. Uh, uh, ben Accor, uh, I mean, if we've got a fit four midfielders, Ben Accor would be my first pick anyway. Yeah, every time. I agree with you. I think he would give you more consistency over a season than the others do. So we know Madison's going to get drop off, or they try to kick lumps out of him, right? And he hasn't really got the physicality that forces his way back into a game like that, Madison, is he, right? Saar, I love to death, right, as well. But he's young, you know. I don't, perhaps Ash can go on. I know, I know Ash likes Basuma. I like Basuma, but I like the Basuma when he's got his mojo back, you know what I mean? Like, because there's something, him, him and Madison. I didn't think they were that great at all, to be honest with you. You don't. No, it's not better though. Look, that look, 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 when look, when, when yes, Hoybier right. came onto the pitch, Madison was able to operate more mm. in the in the part the part mm. of the pitch where he's dangerous in. Whereas with Basuma and Saar of recent, Madison is having to drop so deep to get the ball. He's he's in he's in mm. the that that mm. area of the park where people are kicking lumps out of him, mm. and because he was further up the pitch, more towards the right back area. There were less people to kick him, so he was seeing a bit more joy in that second half. Yeah, I mean, Udogi hasn't been at his best, Dave, is he? I mean, oh, even, yeah. I mean, from Fulham away, when he's bombing on forward, when Dragerson's getting his debut, you know, you'd think there'd be a bit more, a little bit of conservatism here, like, you know, with my play here, because, yeah. like, two of the goals came down outside anyway, you know, and you thought, like, and I love you. I mean, like, we love these players because they're young and they give their all, you know, but, you know, the positivity I've got from this season all season is our resilience. We get out of jail. I don't know where it comes from. Ash will probably know. He's the stats man. But, I mean, we, we, this side's got... I'll tell you what, they, they're stoics. They've got guts, these, these players. They might make mistakes. But I'll tell you what, they hang in there, don't they? You can't deny we don't hang in there. You know, I'll leave it there. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to... I don't know how much time you guys have, but I'm going to try to just bring in some points of the game Mm. And whenever you guys want to jump in, you can jump in. You as well, Marlins. Whenever anyone jumps in, they can jump in. It's not really a tactical, um, it's not really a tactical video or, or, or a slideshow, more or less, but it's just what happened in the game. Just a few screenshots. Um, it's a lot, but I might close it because it's this there's, there's so much of it. So I'll try and get through it as, as quickly as possible. Um, so I'm gonna ignore the first two slides if I can, but Basically, this is when it comes into our possession in the first half. Got Basuma on the ball uh, with Saar uh, across him. Set pieces were the first thing I noticed when we were playing out from those corners. I was like, oh, hang on there. We're doing short corners. 
And what happened is from that short corner, it ended up on us trying to take a shot from outside the box. So I remember against the West Ham game, which Marlon was saying, like we've been missing since that West Ham game, a lot of frustrations from the fans is that we're not shooting enough. And I saw Basuma on the edge of the D and he's taking a shot right there. It doesn't go on target, but I thought, okay, cool. Maybe that's an instruction from Ange. Here's that little um, bit that you were talking about. Was it this bit? Oh, no, this was a bit when your doggy came and he did a bit of recovery pace, but then Vicario came out and he won the ball. Basuma in possession. He's a little bit different to, I would say, a Hoiberg. He likes to carry the ball. He likes to do short passes, mm -hmm. interchange it. And then he tries to find the player in, in the slight holes. Interception there from Basuma, I saw there from early. Um, he's a bit, we pulled the ball up and then he's gone up wide here, if you can see the corner of the screen. And then he's got uh, Sonny and Madders in front of him and Poro also. So he's trying to do link play. He's trying to find uh, passes in between the lines. And sometimes he's carrying the ball. And then he actually gets his shot off by linking up with a Poro, with a Madison. Um, but again, his shot comes to, to nothing. Um, they get a little counter attack here. Alanga down the Actually, flank. Can you pause it there for a second? Yes. I just want to. I just want. I just want to ask a quick question. Yes. Right? So, you said you know the tactics thing you brought up earlier, right? And you know yeah. this was, was very. Is, is probably more in this position, but more high up. That's right. right. Yeah. And for me, because I, I, I know I heard you earlier as well, Ryan. You were talking about just making a little tweak to. One of our, I think you said one of our fullbacks should go forward and one should stay a bit like how Man City and Arsenal are playing at the moment, where Ben White usually stays and Sinchenko yeah. goes, or the other way around. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, all right. And but then you guys will also revert into what happened four, four years ago when we had Walker and Rose, who would both bomb forward. Yeah, is so is this not a problem? Do you not think, right? Because in that situation, in this situation here, right? Yeah, and it'd be quite interesting to go back four years ago. You see where Basuma is in right. the middle, right there. That's right. Yep, yeah. right. Yeah. If you doggy and Poro have pulled up, should Basuma or whoever the number would well, D, I'm gonna call it DM, you don't call it number six, right? Yeah, yeah. But when when Yama or Eric Dyer, when they were playing that position, right? Mm -hmm. This when we had Dembele, would actually drop in between Vatongan and El yeah. Virod, which yeah. Basuma's not doing, right? yeah, because obviously that's what Anne just told him to. But do you think that could cut out the issues if we actually got a DM to actually push in the middle? Because at the moment you could see. In, in other photos, you probably find your doggies a fit, bit further up, and so with Poro. So it actually right. leaves two on one or two on two. Correct, yeah. Which is why right. when you get the situation where we can see that the goal, the zoom is coming across is too late. and doesn't put enough effort in. The, the funny thing is, yeah. Hoiberg actually does that. He actually becomes a back three and he sits in. The yes, with, I've noticed that. Yeah, Between yeah. Van der Ven, Van Ven. and Romero, I apologise. Yeah. So he makes a back three, and then that's where Ben was saying um, Madison doesn't normally drop in that hole anymore because he's able to pull wide, and then um, Hoiber keeps it simple, and he sprays the ball left or right, and he picks the players out from that position because he can see the hole of the pitch, and he's able to do that. So at the moment, yeah, you're seeing Basuma higher up, and that's why I brought that that stat at the beginning, that, that pitch at the beginning, yeah. just to show how much further he had to run back or how much more distance he had to cover back. And I was just wondering if it was an instruction from Ange or was it Bissouma just not being uh, tactically aware of where he needs to be? Because look how far off he is there. Yeah. He's coming to the D. And this wasn't even the actual goal itself. This was literally... Well, this is why I thought I'd ask you the question because um, when you said it, like that pitch, that, that I'm glad you brought up that thing earlier. He, he was so far forward. Which yeah, means you're, you're leaving. Yeah, yeah. which means your, your yeah. defensive midfielder in that situation should be in a space. If you do recover the ball, he should be able to get get the ball and be out of a counter attack and get yeah. the ball. He's so far away. The ball is having to travel almost a quarter, a third of the way up, a quarter of the way up the pitch before it yeah. gets to Basuma. He should be much more compressed in that situation to be able to turn and see what's happening was he's having to get back into position, having to turn his body 360 degrees. It's a, it's another wasted action. So as to your point, that's why I would love a destroyer in midfield to be that, that one Yama figure, get into that back, uh, get in, drop into that back three. There's less space to, to be able to put the ball across because there's more angles covered and there's more men. And when you get the ball, there's more people in that box to say, all right, now I can pull it forward again. It's, 
it shows that Basuma is not defensively um he's not defensively aware in that situation. It's one of the reasons Conte didn't play him, mostly because he probably just didn't like him as a footballer. <laughs> but that that's probably why he wasn't defensively aware enough to get back into that defensive area and start the new phase of play. Mm. So those clips I was just showing was showing how high up he was. I was. Let me bring it back a little bit before I get to this shot from distance. Hold on. But yeah, and, so, so, so before you carry on, so yeah. you're, you're going to say he was very high up, but then do you lose this part of his game or does the DM or whoever it's going to be that number six, do we lose this part of his game where he is, like you said, show this shot where he's on the edge of the box earlier. Yeah. Do we lose that part of his game as well? Because actually if he's having to cover the two and the three and he has to be further back, does this then leave the midfield a bit bare? Yeah, so this is this is my, my my thing. I think this has to be an instruction because, look, we've got Werner out here on the left. You've got Johnson out here on the right. You've got your doggy in the pocket right there in that half space, pinning this defender back. And then you've got Son. And then you've got, I believe, um, it's either Poro or Madison in, in these two pockets here. So, so like, uh, unless... Like he's literally just standing on the sidelines and he's like, well, you know, let them figure it out. I'm pretty sure before the game started, he said to them, you know, I want you to be a bit more front foot, a bit more aggressive. And then maybe at half time he realized maybe I need to switch things up. It's a bit too gone ho. I don't know. I just that's how I'm looking at the moment. Cause look how high up he is. Look at these. This is more than one clip I'm showing. Yeah. And, and, and look how like how many bodies are in front. Like seven players are in front of yeah. him. It's, it's completely crazy. So not crazy, but like it just looks like it's done on purpose to me. But one, two, three, four, five, six players, one there. And then what? Mickey van der Ven and Romero are probably behind you. Um, well, maybe Saar. I don't know if Saar's behind them or there. Was that Saar? Mm -hmm. yeah, Saar's in the orange boots. Sorry, so that's Saar there. So it's, yeah, I don't know. I think it's intentional. Uh, so we, we, we said, look, we're going to surrender this possession. And, and like people are saying, look, he's box to box. But I just, there's, this, there's different types of defensive midfielders, as, as Adrian's always said. You do have registers. Um, and then you've got your old fashioned defensive midfielder, which is more like a sweeper, like um, what, what Ben was saying. Like he wants an old fashioned, you know, someone that holds that position. But there was a shot from distance, you know, Vicario comes out a little bit, you know, because he comes out of the box. He's a pain, like a sweeper keeper, just in case anything happens, which I showed in the first clip. And that's why that guy, uh, he tried it. But as you said, um, Marlon, mm -hmm. you're going to lose a bit of that from Basuma or whoever our six is, because even when Hoiberg did come on, he had a shot on goal, but he was taking those shots from, from outside the box. So I'm wondering if it was an instruction to say, look, I want you guys to be a bit more front-footed, a bit more aggressive. Like, we're Tottenham, this is Forest. do you know what I mean? Mm. Even in this clip here, you can see Van der Ven's on the ball. You can see Son's trying to make that run diagonally across. You can see his body shape. And you can see a doggy right there in the pocket. And I'm assuming that might be Madders in the midfield right there. Yeah. Uh, so Mickey's looking up for him. You can see Son's making that run. And he's going to try and hit it. But I don't think Mickey's got that in his locker at the moment because that ball is intercepted quite easily by a Forest player and Son gets no ball. And and sometimes Son is making these kind of um, runs, but they're just not picked up by our yeah. team. Anyway, Basuma plays a ball around the corner. After he plays that ball around the corner, goes into feet, I think it's into Poro, goes back into Basuma, link play, finds the ball into Son in that pocket of space, and then he finds Werner, and then Werner's free, and he's always free, and he plays that that ball into that six yard box that danger area right into the mixer yeah. and they end up scoring a goal and it was because of that the sumo i felt like and the same with the, the the fullbacks i think their job was to win the ball high up to stop those transitions from happening so they were meant to be a little bit more front-footed mm. and so that's where you see basuma winning another attack and he's starting that attack straight away he's, he's on the front foot and this was in the first 20 minutes as i was saying we were looked a lot more energetic we had a lot more of the ball and again Basuma had another shot pulled just wide it was unlucky for this one and and that's how it was and it felt like he lost his foot in that on that part and, that, and when he loses his foot in then we're exposed and all of a sudden we're all running with our backs to goal and then for, luckily for us Hudson Adoy he just shoots straight at the keeper and yeah. Vicaro was able to save it um in the next clip I'm showing here Bis wins the challenge again it's always high up Bis is front footed he wins the ball high up 
And I believe that was the tactic. So when we're front footed, we're not bad, but sometimes teams do break out and they don't, we don't always win that press. Here he is again on the side and he wins another challenge. He sniffs out the danger, wins the ball back. And guess what? He starts another attack after he wins the ball back between two players. There you see him battling again. So it is, it's crazy. It's like night and day between the first 20 minutes and the second 20 minutes where, where he came back. Biss again in that, in that pocket, look in this area on the edge of the D, I call it zone 14. He's able to pick up the ball and shoot. That's what you want. I think Basuma needs to do shooting practice, to be fair. He shoots it right, the goalkeeper. Yeah. Should be doing better there. Werner out wide, always gets found, always in that particular area, takes his man on, 1v1 on the shoulder. Um, you know, he's beating his man, taking him for every day, every second he was beating him, beating him, beating him. Um, and I wish he could play um, that player each time. Johnson had a shot block right there. Um, I thought Johnson was unlucky because of the other game scores it. Mickey van der Ven, I love this bit when he swept up because when he swept up, the whole crowd, I loved it. I, 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 got it was I was sitting on my bed and I think I got up and I started doing yeah, it. Was mental. Yeah, that was that was beautiful. And I think the fans appreciated it. I showed a clip there with the fans clapping and olaying and stuff. So I thought that was a good moment. Biss in the build up again. Uh, Fran and Star on this occasion, we go down the wing, goes into um, Johnson. Johnson finds Star. But I think. He should have played, pull it back a bit. I think he should have played Son. I think Son makes a great run. I don't know if you can see that, but Son's pointing. Give it to me yeah. here, bro. Like, so everyone's like, oh, Son's not a number nine. He can't do it against a lot of blocks. But actually, he's just not being found. And I just think sometimes it's the decision making from our team where we're not picking out these balls, when the teams do try to press and then they get caught and they're, they're back to goal. This is when you want Son. Son's got acres of space. Can we hit him? Can we find him? No, we choose the wrong ball. And then we go down the side. Son makes that run. He gets into that channel. He crosses it. And the keeper reads it. And it comes to nothing. Yeah. Goal equalizer starts from here. It's a switch of play. Goes out wide. And this is where with Marlon, you see the doggy. His body shape, for me, is all wrong. Mm. He's a bit mm. too square, flat-footed. Can't really see what's behind him. And as a defender or a fullback, you know you need to be side on. You need to be with your shoulders halfway so you can see what's behind you, you can see what's in front of you, and you can easily turn and run if you need to. So I think his body shape's a little bit wrong. You can see Basuma there. He's got uh, Morgan Gibbs White on his shoulder in that in that clip. And this is the first phase of play, the first phase of play. Goes down the channel. Again, as, as he said, he's square. At this point, Basuma's running back. He's left um, MGW, so... He's no longer seen him as responsible, a responsibility. Mickey van der Ven comes across and you can see Romero right there in the corner of the screen. He's coming across to cover Mickey. So then the next phase of play, you're seeing the doggy trying to run back um, to cover his position. And in this instance here, as I said, Mickey van der Ven's cross, come across. Um, Asuma's gone across. Um, Romero's gone across. And in this phase here, you can see... Um, What's the name? Malanga is pointing. He's saying, look, pass into this channel here. This is where I want it. Because see his little hand there. Pass it. By yeah. then, I think Basuma should be switched on. This is where I think the fan base is getting upset. Because he's not switched on to say, look, I'm going to take that responsibility. You can see Romero there. He's now coming across to deal with it. With Poro on the shoulder looking to take cover his position. So now the ball comes into that channel. It gets played. And now you've seen Romero trying to cover Basuma's back. But I think the biggest problem with Basuma running back here is that it looks like it's lethargic because it looks like he's jogging back instead of sprinting back. Do you know what I mean? It looks like he's almost given up hope. Even though it looks like he's trying to get back, it's a bit too late. And Romero slided across. Poro's trying to cover. And you know what happens next? It ends up in the back of the net through uh, Poro's legs. You can see Poro there trying to stretch across. And Wood has enough composure to slide at home. So that that's where everyone's going mad at Basuma for. Yeah. And that, like, look, he's switching off. Does that affect his, his confidence? Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Here he is controlling the ball from deep again. He's winning the ball. Not so many bodies committed forward this time. And he's trying to start the attack. He plays the ball on the outside, trying to find Johnson, picks the ball up again. Johnson plays it back to him. He finds, I think it's either Son or Poro Son there. Son gets the ball. And I think Son right here, he's got a shoot. He's in the D. He's in that zone 12, that zone 14 I was talking about. It's on his left foot. 
I'm used to seeing Son bend it like Beckham right there yeah. in that corner. But for some reason, Son's not shooting. Even though I said at the start of the video, like I look like in this instruction that we need to start shooting more. And the players were doing that. But for some reason, our best shooter of the ball, our best finisher is not doing it. He's looking for Werner instead. He finds Werner in this pocket of space. What Werner does next, he overcooks it. And we know Werner, like, when it comes to shooting and, and that decision-making, he's not always the best. <laughs> Poro makes a mistake. It goes over him. And again, we need our six to be back. There's Basumo. I'm pointing at. He needs to be there. He's a little bit late. He's languishing. He's trying to get back. I should be in that position. He's not close enough. And guess what? It goes to um, their midfielder, Yates, who was giving Madison trouble all day. I think that was his assignment. He slides. If he stands on his feet and gets a better connection, that could trouble Vicario more. But luckily, we've got a top, top keeper, and he stretches and makes it save like Italian night on Mega Drive back in the day. Mm. Wood <laughs> the post. Oh, he hits the post from that day. Like, you just need composure. For me, I can't believe he missed it, but it was good for all Spurs fans that he did miss it. Mm. So I'm not mad at it. Right. But again, Basuma, like, wow. Um, he needs to be a little bit more attentive, more proactive than reactive, smell the danger. And positionally, he was in all sorts. He should have been there. He should have been in a, in a position that what Marlon said, almost joining the centre-backs. Um, but again, high up the pitch. Again, here he is. Um this switches the play this time. So he's doing a different type of pass into Werner. Werner gets the ball, picks it up on the flank, beats his man, gets him. We've got four players to aim at. Doesn't it doesn't come to anything. Your doggy again, flat footed, falls on his on his back, tries to get out quickly, tries to recover the ball, crosses over hit by a langer. Thank goodness. Um Basuma gets the ball, controls with his chest, takes a touch, tries to pivot, and that's when he loses his foot again. And you could just tell I'm like, nah, it's not his day today, man. He's just having a he's having a mirror now. Do you know what I mean? Fans are starting to groan, and everyone's like, well, get get rid. This is passing between the lines. He finds a nice ball to Son right there in between the lines. And then Son's able to spread it out and find Johnson running up with uh Star not far behind. Johnson's chance comes off the back of this because we play some nice football here. It's a nice little interchange of passing. Basuma's involved in this one as well. Son gets into the into the action. It actually breaks to, to Werner. Werner's always free on that side, passes it back to Madison. Madison uh, finds Basuma. Basuma picks up the ball, gives it back. So it's a little interchange of play here where we're just dominating. Finds Sonny. I think Sonny can shoot again. Gives it to uh, Johnson. He finds Johnson instead. And then Johnson deflects and it hits the crossbar. And I think, oh, Sonny, you could have had a shot there again. It's on your left. You know you can shoot your left. Madison punch. So I'll, I'll pause it here. I don't know if you guys saw that, but he obviously punches um, Yates in the stomach. Do you think that was a yellow card? Should it be in the second yellow card or should it be in a straight red? What are your thoughts, guys, on, on this particular incident? Madison should be, uh, he should be old enough and ugly enough to know you don't punch someone in a football game with VAR. It's a totally stupid, and it could have backfired on us. It could have backfired massively on another day where the VAR is actually using their eyes instead of, I don't know, probably watching highlights of WrestleMania. Um, <laughs> um, they, they would send him off. Uh, it, was, it was a dreadful thing to do for Madison. And it, it screams a player that is frustrated in himself. And that's what Yates try, had, try, had tried to do in the first game when we played them. And it's what he did wind us up because he knows there there are disciplinary issues although we have calmed that down in the second half of the season so far there is still that little disciplinary problem that we have of getting stupid yellow cards in stupid places and i'm surprised he went for a madison tried to wind up a madison rather than someone like a romero because he romero would have loved to fight it'll be like it's my time of the year boys let's have a go i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna but yeah, it's stupid. It, it was a red card. On another day, it's a red card, and he should be doing better. <coughs> what do you think, Adrian? Is it a red, or do you think he went down too easy? I'm right at the other end of the pitch, high in the east end, so I didn't really see what all the fuss was going on at the time. Uh, if he well, he should know better. You know, he's got one of the vice captain's roles as well, so he should be leading by example. He shouldn't do it. Having said that, what probably saved him, from what I read was the fact that Yates was going to the referee 
I don't know, Go to Var and all that, which is a booking offence in itself. So, yeah. uh, so I think that saved him. And I think the ref was probably pleased to get out of jail in that one, like, you know, so maybe it helped them both. Tell you what. Yeah. Um, so go on, go on. Sorry, Adrian. So, Harold, finish off. Um, I'm interested to know what SAR's heat map was for this. Have you got one? Yeah, I've got a heat map for SAR. Um, I can do that in about, well, five minutes. Yeah, that's okay. So, so don't... I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. Just a few things because yeah. I'm looking at this game. What I was seeing was sometimes I know it happens because you can find yourself in different areas of the pitch for different reasons and space opens up, blah, blah, and all that. But sometimes I thought Basuma was where Madison's would be and Madison should have been where, you know, uh, you know, and. and and I'm sorry, sometimes I thought Madison should have been where Ms. Basuma was when he was further forward and Basuma should have been of him patrolling a bit more behind behind us, you know? Yeah. Rather than yeah. pushing up so far for a, for a possible counter, which happened. But I'm not sure, because you can't take everything into the game. That's why I come to you guys and listen to other people's... This know, is it. What, what, what do you think, Jay, now? Obviously, this is... You, you called it a couple of shows ago. About, <laughs> so you called it out <laughs> early. I, I, don't to, I don't want to say I told you so, but we'll we'll get there. <laughs> mm. Oh man, all right. So I'll just move on from this clip anyway. So I <laughs> punched him. No, no, but can I, can I just say one thing on, on that? Like, um, yeah, cause, cause, uh, when because I did drop you a message, didn't I, over the weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, 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 yeah. I said because yeah. I've I've been saying this for a little while about Madison. You know, is that um, I like the player. I thought he would lift us. Think he's technically good. Can't discount what he did at the start of the season, but there's there's a character thing about him that I, I that when he, he joined, I ignored. Do you know what I mean? I ignored because I was happy to get him. Yeah, but I, I see it. Like people say, he lost his cool. He he, he often loses his cool, and I I don't have an issue with a player playing on the edge. I like a player with edge, but you have to control your edge, and he's a vice captain. And the other captains aren't getting hooked. The other captains aren't losing their call. Cool. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 a frustration thing with him because he's not hit the rhythm. But he just needs to he just needs to understand that like he's he's a quality player and he'll get back there. But this could easily have been a red. It calmly could have been a red, and it could have cost the team like badly because. Because he's getting agitated because Yates is is winning the battle against him. Do you know what I mean? He got agitated when Mope scored. He got to, he gets agitated too easily, and and it, it's just it's, it's because of um him getting the he's getting lumps kicked out of him for the last <laughs> five games though, Jay, isn't it? It's a yeah, it, it's a, that that that's another reason why I'm annoyed at Basuma because Basuma should be helping his brother out. He, they mm. should be he should be helping him out. That's why when Hoybier came onto the pitch, they all shut up. Because as yeah. soon as someone tried to go near Madison, I, I'll have a fight. I'm supposedly yeah. a Viking. Come do you know give what? it some, mate. Do you, do you know yeah. what? That's a good point. That's a good I, point. I do kind of disagree about him getting lumps kicked out of him because I don't really think he's played well enough to even get lumps kicked out of him. <laughs> if, I'm oh, being, no, no, if, I'm, if, if I'm being honest, no. Yeah, out. but he was getting lumps kicked out of him in the first 10 games. But I think it's not... Because I think he hasn't. he doesn't touch the ball as much. He comes deeper as... He comes too deep now. Right, mm -hmm. and I think he's he's just not this. This reminds me of how he was at Leicester, and this was always my worry about James Madison when coming in, that he does not always, you know, the first ten games he was in, he was in, involved in everything. He's come back from injury. I don't know if it's too early or not, but the team's kind of evolved since then, and it seems like we've evolved away from needing James Madison as much because when the Celso comes on now, it seems to be working for him. So I don't know, like, for me, I don't think he's been getting lumps kicked out of him. I just think what the team has done, because Sonny, Sonny's, you know, Sonny, Sonny, right? But the wingers have changed. They're not the same. Well, we haven't got the same players Madison left the team with. And I think that's been a big problem to why Madison's not been playing well in the last few weeks. It's because it's not the same team he left. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, it's it's the action areas, isn't it, though, Marlon? Because yeah. he's having to drop so deep. When he does uh, receive the ball, uh, well, when, you say no ha when, you, when, you, when you say having to drop so deep, you say having. Yeah. He's having to drop deep to get the ball they, because of, because of the spaces that Udogi and Porra are taking up in those number ten roles. Mm -hmm. There's less space for him in that num number ten pocket to pick up the ball and turn. 
So what he's doing is he's dropping into more of the number eight position to mm -hmm. receive the ball. And that is genuinely in a, in a possession based football team. Those are the higher action areas. Mm -hmm. So when teams play against us, they don't really play a low block. They play a mid block because we put so many people in midfield that is, you can throw a blanket over them. So okay, Madison's, so Madison's dropping deep to get the ball and he's running into that, those three, four okay. players in that mid block. But, 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 so that, but let, 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 me, let me just quickly play devil's advocate in terms of what you're saying because with this point then so what you're saying is he, he can't he's failing to find space in in the pockets so that so that what we, we what you're saying is i'm not discounting it but the end result is he is failing to find space whether or not that's by the other team closing the pockets or whether it's by him not being able to identify it he's then going deeper and when he's deeper He's not moving the ball quick enough to move those shields. He's not so when he's going deeper, he's not affecting the game from deep. When he's he can't find the pocket. So whilst giving him the defense of what you're saying so far, we've got lumps kicking out of him, the pockets, he's having to. I'm also looking at it as an elite 10 in the Premier League. These are issues that the other elite tens face on a weekly basis, and they seem to be finding solutions to it. So whilst I'm not disagreeing with your point, I only think it's mitigation rather than a it's rationale. The it's the system. Other teams in the Premier League don't play their wing backs as number 10s. Uh, a lot of those pitches you see Udogi and Poro taking up, they're in James Madison position. True. They're in his position. It's like when Perisic played for Tottenham last year, one of the massive complaints of having Perisic at left wing back was East was taking up the position that Sonny does best in, which is in that far left position, being able to turn on his right foot and whip it into the bottom corner. It's a very similar situation. There's no space in the middle of the park because we are playing our wing back so narrow and so far forward. Someone like a James Madison relies on that space. He relies on that space to be able to put the ball out wide where a fullback would usually be. Huh? But it, it's... It's learning a new system. Even for James Madison as a, as a seasoned Premier League midfielder, no one has played this sort of football before. And I've not seen another team play inverted fullbacks this inverted. And again, having Udogi and Poro as number 10s in effect, which is another reason why there's so much space when teams break on us. It's, well, that, it's that we need to figure out how we can get Madison in that number 10 role but also allow Udogi and Poro. It's why I don't like inverted fullbacks. I want to see Udogi and Poro toss the ball in the box. But, but, but the thing is, is everything everything that you've said is, whilst not discounting it, is this issue didn't exist in the first 10 games. Yeah? It didn't exist. So so now we're saying it's the same team bar Werner. Yeah? So if we're saying that Werner being in the team is such a material difference to how Madison plays, that he no longer can function effectively. That's that's a bit of a cop out to me. No, it's not that though. It's not that, Jay. When you would like you take the first ten games, you Doggy and Porro weren't playing so, so high up because they wasn't used to the way and wanted to play. Yeah. But what you're seeing now is that they've played how many games, and you, you do have to say you Doggy and Porro. You can see it are so yeah. far forward. They're in those positions that James Madison probably in the yeah. first 10 games was taking well, up. Well, we saw P Poro and Udogi wasn't as far forward because probably at the time, they probably yeah. wasn't used to the way it's all being done. But as you saw it develop as the season's gone on, they are now that far I'm, forward. I'm, 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 I'm just, all I'm saying is, yeah. is that like, like whilst the mitigation... And we, was, and we didn't have a left winger. Yeah, You're right. The, the, the mitigation goes way. It's it's too yeah. far. This is not a nineteen year old, twenty year old. We're talking about. Yeah. We're, we're talking about a seasoned international player who's our playmaker. Yeah. If the space isn't there, go find the space. Yeah. But that's but that's what he's got. That's and, that, and that's where I'll, that's the next point where he's yeah. actually got to learn to progress in this team because obviously where Poro and Udogi and now where Ange said no, this is where you need to be. James yeah. Madison's missed that chunk of the season. So now he now he's probably playing catch up to where because he got injured and actually is you know you saw it with this third goal right because I think it will show it here where he does get into a different kind of space and he does put the cross in which gets it on Ventacle's head and Poro then scores so he, it's probably going to take some time with him at the moment oh, as well. Is is that not similar to was it he scored we scored a goal I can't remember who he played now but he scored a goal from from the throw quick throw in 
He was he was in he was in the channel. Luton. Yeah, Luton. Luton. Yeah, yeah, first yeah, yeah, yeah. time lifted yeah. the ball into the area. Yeah, that was from the right hand side. Yeah, this one on the left hand, he can find the space. He can he can do what we're asking him to do. So he just needs to go do it. Like and that, and that's and that's 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 what it is for me. All of this, these guys are playing in this position and this and that just tells me that he's got runners and players who are making moves in good positions that he can play off. And, and he needs to capitalize on that. He needs to show the intelligence that he is a top four playmaker. He is a playmaker that can dictate for a whole season. Because we're already missing, we're already going to miss him for 20, 25% of the season. The reason why I'm being so critical on Madison is that you're going to miss him for 25% of the, of the season being injured. So he can't afford periods of time not playing well because yeah. we're already missing him for another period of time. I need 100% quality from you, mate, because you're not here for a quarter of the season. It's not his fault he gets he gets kicked out of the game, though, Jay. He gets lumps kicked out of him, which is why he gets so many... Ang it's, if it was, like, hamstring injuries, if it was, like, back injuries, I'd be like, I would agree with you. The fact that he's getting ankle injuries because people are stamping on his ankles every game, that's why he's getting... Ang you don't get an ankle injury because it just stops working. He's getting kicked every game, which is why he's getting ankle injuries. So it's actually him being in those areas and him being a target, which is why he's getting his ankles kicked every single game. It's mm -hmm. we it's a it's a mixture of both. I, I would love to see Ange tell Udoga Udo, Udogi and Poro they shouldn't be so narrow. I don't mm -hmm. like my full backs being number ten well, so, anyway. So, so, are, you, so are, you, are you saying are, you, are you saying that we should change the formation for Madison? No, I think we should put fullbacks where fullbacks play. Well, but the thing is, is tactically, we're, we're playing how Ange wants us. This is what the manager wants us to do. He wants the fullbacks to um, to invert. That's what we're doing. Whether or not we we want that, yeah, that's not what the manager wants. So this is what the manager wants, right? So that needs to happen. So essentially, if we're if we're giving all these mitigations for Madison because these players are inverting, are we are you are, you, are we starting to say the ceiling of him in this team? Is already started to be reached if he cannot find solutions because this is what the manager wants us to do. I just want to see players play in their correct position. But, but that's not. But that's not. That's not an answer to my question. My, the, um, the question I specifically asked. It's an answer to the bigger picture, which is no, no. no I, I'd like an answer to my question of what I'm saying in terms of that's what the manager wants us to do. Tactically, that's how he wants us to set up. So if that's what the manager wants us to do, and Madison is struggling. Are you going? Would you concede or agree with me that then he has started to reach his ceiling in the side then, because he can't function in this side when the manager opts for his plan A? I see it as a manager with only one trick. That's, I think. That's I think personally, is. the best I, managers in the world they see the players they've got and they say, "I've got two of the best wide players from Serie A and from the Portuguese league." Why am I playing them as number tens? We should be playing them as wing backs. I as as one of the reasons I'm so critical of this system. I want to see Udogi, who is an absolute beast when he gets up to speed. I don't want to see him running into traffic. I want to see him taking on his fullback, making them put them on their ass, and then put it on the and then put it in the in the um, in the box. That's what that's what I want to see. I want to see Udogi doing what he's best at, which is being an absolute monster not playing as a number 10. He leave technical players to be technicians and leave beasts to be beasts. And Ange is going to have to learn that. In the Premier League, you have to adapt to the players you've got. Um, YGG, I'm not, I'm not saying this about... Yeah. I'm saying it about um, the context of Madison in relation to what's being said about the formation and the issues. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying Madison can't do this or can't do that. I'm saying that if we're blaming the formation and the tactics for why Madison is not shining, yeah, then, I mean, we don't necessarily need to change the tactics for Madison. It, it really should be the play. We should get the the players who, who can play in this formation the best should get the games then. Why, what, why should the formation be adapted for the players? It wasn't adapted for Emerson Royale. 
So why should it be adapted for games? You know, at what point? At point do you draw? At what point do you draw the line that you should adapt the formation for the player? Do you see what I mean? Your it's threshold is Madison. Emerson Royale. My threshold could have been Emerson Royale. You picked such a bad player to compare. No, 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 no. You could have, you could have picked a Giovanni <laughs> Lascelsa. You picked no, no, the worst that's, player. That's, in the game. That's, that's the point of the thing. As in, like we know, if Emerson even played a different type of, if if we didn't invert, then Emerson would look better. But no, he wasn't. Like, that's him for Emerson. No, he wasn't. So. <laughs> Emerson well, we, didn't, we, didn't drop the, we didn't drop the line when Dyer was the only centre back available because he, he's not fast. We didn't we don't adapt for certain players. So the, if your threshold is Madison, I'm intrigued because you know when do you start doing it for other players then, right? You've got to look at what you've got. And whilst we are a young team, Pochettino did this in his first season. He hasn't got all the players for his jigsaw puzzle yet. So you've got to adapt where you can. When Ange Postacoglu has all of his football players and it's all down to recruitment at the end of the season, when he has every single one of his players available to him, that's when he can be a bit stubborn because I've got my pieces of the puzzle. Now I can be a bit more stubborn. I don't when change, mate. I don't change, mate. Once we are, once when we are in our learning curve, we've <laughs> got to be a bit adaptable. When, when, when we look, when we look disjointed and lack cohesion, it's not down to one player. We seem to be favour the fact that we all have a player to hate and we're going to beat that one with a stick. You know what I mean? Look look where we are. I mean, we got 60 points, the same amount of points of all last season. We scored the same amount of goals that we scored all last season. And we've done it without Harry Kane. And we got seven games to go. We are not in a bad place, right? Results could have been better. I mean, imagine. I mean, if Ash will get the stats up. I'm, I, feel, I wonder... I just wonder how many big chances we have missed this season and how that would have turned the point situation around. Because we must, have, we must have missed at least 30. I'm sure it's more than that, Ash. If you can ever get it up, get it up. And and then suddenly you score a goal in the game, you beat a team more convincingly, you haven't, sk- you haven't conceded goals. So although this is a work-in-progress team, there's lots of things that alarm me at times, right? But I think Angie's doing a pretty good job considering everybody yeah. finished. We're going, to, we're going to finish mid table. It's a learning curve, Andrew. It's a total learning curve. No, oh. no, no, no one in the Premier League or even in this side of Europe, up, uh, put Scotland aside, in an elite league of football, no one has seen this style of football. It's every single player in that squad, whether they're an under 11 player or whether they're a first teamer that's been there for 10 years, no one has played this style of football. They're all going to have to learn this style of football. Of course. Which of is course. And Ange, Ange has got to be given time and he'll be judged on whether his style of football is a success or a failure. It's not a failure at present. That's what I'm trying to say. Like For me, like I'm an Ange guy. Like, as in, I'm, I'm 100% an Ange guy. The system's the system. The, the manager's the manager. The manager is priority over everybody. So... The manager's formation is the manager's formation. Like we, we've been pr- like if if Poro stays a little wider or Doji stays a little wider during the game, there's a, it's just like tweaks. It's just like tactical tweaks within the game. I don't really specifically look at it like oh this guy's constantly inverting or this guy. You know what I mean? It's just how we play. We just do it, mate. And I don't want us to be adaptable. <laughs> I want us to, to 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 have Plan A to such a level. That you know, we're absolutely all teams have a plan B, though, Jay, don't they? All pl- teams, not have really, a not really, yeah. most, not really. Most teams they'll, they'll have different players, all the best like, players have got, a plan B, they all not, have a, a trick up their sleeve. They have no, a, they've, they've just got better squads, they've just got better, like they've got more players on the bench, they've got more variables. They're not really changing the way they play, they're still playing the same way. When Arsenal have Havertz up front instead of Jesus, they're broadly playing similar. They're not. They're not putting. <laughs> no, when they go to the Etihad, Jay. When Havertz, when Havertz plays, when, it's like they when, do change there. Like they like against no. Man City, they play totally different. They yeah, but the thing is, is the but, 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 if, but if you have Kulusevski as an eight and or Sar as an eight, it's like they, we're going to play in a different way. So if you then move Kulusevski, that we're still playing the same broad football that we're playing. It's just you have a different profile of player occupying a certain position so that's what to me is that's not a plan b that's just different players playing in different positions like, it's like, it's like kind of fast forwarded like 
to the question because Marlon had it. And basically, Eric Dyer came out and he said a comment. And Ange, um, sorry, Ali Gold also came out of a comment. And basically, the comment was, I think, uh, sorry, Ange said he's not drilling down into tactics because he wants to develop the style of play, the identity, no matter the opponent. It's not about the detail this season. It's about the broader strokes. I'll dive into the final details next season. So do you guys think this is the right approach? Do you agree within the first season this is what he should be doing? Or do you disagree that maybe he should be getting into, like, you know, the detail? And as Ben was saying, you know, we need to play players in their right positions and adapt and have a plan B, etc. Or not a plan B, but certain games we need to kind of like, you know, in certain game situations, maybe we need to tweak it. Maybe um, you, you bring one of your defensive midfielders as a centre-back and play in the back three when we have the ball, just to give us a bit of protection. And I'll start off. Anyone can answer us. Anyone can jump in. I mean, we, we showed we, we showed the inklings of a plan B, didn't we, Ash, when he brought on Hoybier? Because what did Hoybier do that Basuma didn't do? Get the ball, pass the ball quickly and accurately, which is basically what Basuma should be doing in that number six role. That's what Ange wants his number sixes to do. But is, is that down to the skill set? I think it's what Jay was trying to say. Is well, this is down to the skill set? There was definitely a raising of the tempo with Hoybier coming on. Uh, if if he's been told to do that and he's not doing it, Ange needs to hook Basuma off because as soon as Hoybier came onto the pitch, if it became it was night and day, um, Ash, you said you said it yourself. It was night and day, and that was all the change of one player saying, you know what, we've got two really wide wingers with lots of pace. I'm going to use them and stretch the field of play, which would then allow those inverted with those inverted fullbacks. It actually gave them a bit of space because they were using. Timo Werner and <laughs> and um, Johnson as the as the wingers. None of, none of this is different. Plan B though. This is still Plan A, just with different profiles. Like I, I, nothing you're saying makes me think this is Plan B. This is just. So why wasn't Bas why wasn't Basuma passing the ball into the wingers in the first because, half? Then? Because he because because he's incompetent at times. I don't, I don't know. Like as in why why is Ange playing in them? Okay, so listen. When you play as the six, yeah, there's a there's a vast degree of skill set, it seems, you need to play as an Ange six, yeah? Lots of skills you need. Now, Bazuma has a number of them, but he doesn't he doesn't execute them all at the same time. At moments, he does. He has a good 45 minutes here, a good... So he's come into this game, and he's had a bad 45 minutes. Everything that Bizu, um, Hoiberg was doing well in terms of progressing the ball, breaking lines, finding cross-field balls and everything. Bazuma was not doing that in the first half. Now, if if Andrews told uh, Pierre to do that, that to me is not a plan B. That's just like, we're still playing the same way, but a player with a different profile is coming on and they're able to execute a plan it, B. It tells me it is a plan B if we weren't doing it in the first half. What's well, what's it's game not, state though? Do, do you know you know what game state is? So obviously there's stuff that wasn't existing when the game started. So things will happen as the game progresses, and now you need to react or you need to say this is what's going on. That's not really a plan B. That's it's, it's, it's been, I get where you're coming from. Hoiberg's not a solution, though, is it? Because it's been proven before. Of course, when we played better teams, when we played against better teams. Hoiberg's been found wanting because he can't beat the press, gets caught in possession. No, no like, can he always give 100%. And we've seen Norton. it in good games when Basuma's played well. He can beat the press, get, do it quickly, get out. And then first 10 games. I mean, remember when people were, were screaming, oh, Hoiberg's not good enough and all that. He, to this system, he's still not the right He's still not the right fit for oh, the no, system. Oh, no, he's not. He's not. He's not the player for the system. I, I think it's a case of square pegs in, in round holes. Basuma is one of the best number eights we've got at the club, but he's been shoehorned into a position he's not good at. Basuma's main quality is he is an excellent ball carrier. He's brilliant at beating players. He's it, uh, get, uh, When I was watching the game with Brian Ireland against Man United, one of the things Basuma did really well was he was taking play, the ball past players like Prime Moussa Dembele. That is what 
Basuma is good at because he's got such a, a, a strange way of running, but it's almost like unpredictable the way he runs. That's what he's great at, oh, Basuma. Oh, could, could I ask you, if you were to put a percentage of, in terms of Basuma at Tottenham, across the games that he's played for us, what percentage of games, yeah, would you say that he's played well? For you to say that he's the best number eight at the club. Uh, he's not played as a number eight this season. No, but I mean, but I mean, uh, in, in his in his entire time, I have thirty percent of these games this season have been good. I, I've okay, not. I, I, I think thirty percent is thirty percent is bad. Thirty percent, I think is bad. He does two men in a match of wolves in the first ten games. He was, he was brilliant. He was brilliant, but the whole team was brilliant, and that's not down to Basuma. But when we needed Basuma to be that calming influence in midfield, like Luton away, for example. He got two stupid yellow cards, got sent off, and we didn't see him for, what was mm -hmm. it, seven, eight games because he went to the African Cup of Nations? Yeah, he had three suspensions. It's three suspensions. Three suspensions. That, mm -hmm. That's why he was out for so many games. Basuma is good at making runs. That's what he's good at. That's what he was good at with Brighton. He wasn't necessarily the sitting number six, which is another reason why I want a player like a Victor Wanyama who's going to drop between those centre-backs. Because I think that would actually get the best out of our centre-backs as well. Because we've got two excellent ball-carrying centre-backs. Mickey van der Ven, when he was at Wolfsburg, would come into midfield with the ball and pass the ball forward into those channels. Romero's been doing it for us the last few games, going into the channels, passing the ball forward. So if we had a destroyer number six who would drop into that centre-back role, we would get the best out of our centre-backs and we'd get the best out of Basuma as well. It's having the pieces of the puzzle... That, actually, that that make the team better. It's it's a team and a squad game. You can't just play a player that's, you can't play players that have played in different positions their entire career and suddenly you think, oh, they're going to be a number six now. That's not what, that's not what they've well, learned to well, do. Well, so I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to. I'm, see, my thing is is that I'm 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 fair. So the thing is is the lens that I look through certain players is. Is step by step. So now I'm looking at these players as top six players, you know, top six players in a squad for top six. Yeah. Next season, I want a top four squad, a top a squad that's capable of achieving 80 points. So when I'm talking about this and I'm looking at someone like Bazuma, I'm not giving him an eight role in this team. He's done absolutely nothing to deserve it. And if he's showing that he can't play as a six, then now two I'm different calling roles the... though, Jay. A number six and a number eight are two different positions on a football pitch. Well, it's how many? How, 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 you might as well be comparing Palmers well, and how, 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 how many? How many eights? How many eights do we have though? Uh, we've got uh, Benson Kerr can play in that. We've got yeah. we've got Saar that can play in that position. Yeah. Remember, we're going to be playing three games a week. Yeah, yeah. Week. Keep, keep going, though. Keep going. We've got we've got Benson Kerr. We've yeah. got Benson Kerr is actually more of the actual. Um, more of the register type player in the team because that's what he played at Juventus. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not doubting, I'm, I'm, I'm not doubting um, that. So I so would I say we've got two recognised number eights in Saar okay. and Basuma, and we've yeah. got two recogni recognisable number sixes in Hoybier and and um, and Benson Kerr. Okay, so let's say you're let's forgetting say, forget one person as well. Saar, what about Saar? It's nice. Saar is more of an eight, as what yeah. I said. I said Saar and Basuma are and two of our more. Athletic and... carrying the ball number eight type mm -hmm. players, but and then you've got so many different types of number eight. You've got more skip, guy yeah. Everyone's forgetting about Skip, who who and just played there. Oh, he's I'm... worth forgetting though, isn't he? Yeah, he's I know what you're saying, but he's but he's but the likelihood <laughs> is that Skip's going to stay because he's homegrown. <laughs> and, We've got no and, choice and, with Skip. Skip's not a number six. He's not a number eight. He's just left back mm. on the bench. Get rid like, of him. But, but, but <laughs> obviously, we can't unfortunately. <laughs> For, 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 context good, point, for context point, though, look at it. Okay, so you're ignoring the tens no in Madison. It, it, you, we're ignoring the tens in Madison and Lasalso, but let's say one ten plays, one eight plays, one six plays, right? So now he moves into a position where there'll, where there'll be like three eights. Yeah, let's say we buy a number six. Or um, Kulusevski can play centrally as well. So um, I'm looking at this from the point of view of saying, um, okay, the guy doesn't really score goals. Doesn't really assist. Okay, we'll see what he can do as an eight, I guess. But his 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 opportunity to play in this team is as a six for me. 
Like, if he doesn't play in this team as a six, he's definitely not playing in this team as an eight. I just showed a heat map for Saar, by the way, because Adrian wanted to see where he was mm. where he was on the pitch. But yeah, there you go. Sorry, mm. carry on there. Sorry. Yeah, and so all, all I'm saying is, is that when I'm looking at these players, like, obviously, I'm happy with the team. I think the team's done great this season. Really happy with the progression. Um, the system is king. That's That's what it is for me. So... For me, I'm not even overly critical of the system because we haven't seen the optimum version of the system. So that means that certain players in this team are going to leave the team. They're not going to be starters, even though they look like they might be long-term starters now. In a year, 18 months, they'll be sat on the bench, they'll be on the transfer list, blah, blah, blah. You know, we can't see it now because it, we're not there yet. But that's what I'm saying. I'm, but the system is king. Because as soon as you stop focusing on the system, you lose focus of what happens. just on that system question because we were meant to ask this and it was about mickey van de ven mm -hmm. is the system too reliant on him oh it's totally no. reliant on him it's oh, totally really. reliant on his pace because we leave so many players in midfield that we only we end up only having two defenders back because everyone's so high yeah. and when you put the ball into that channel there's only one guy in that team that can keep up with that pace, and that's Mickey Van de Ven. That and he, he did that three yeah, times. Yeah, in that I agree with that, Ben, but it's not totally reliant because Mickey Van de Ven can't play every game like every other game. So if you're gonna pick games when he may need a rest, you, you need to buy another you need to buy another well, you buy another fast centre back, or you pick your team that, 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 that you're gonna play against another team that hasn't got such quick silver forwards. So if they've got a static, you know, a slow centre forward, it's not such a problem, is it? You get different problems, though, Adrian, don't they? Because yeah, you do. You get different problems. Every team sets different, different problems, don't they? Yeah, I agree. Part, if you have, like, if you, for example, if you had a static centre forward, we are not good in the air at all, at all. We are dreadful mm -hmm. at corners, for example. You, it, it has, it has different um, challenges. We need to sign since the really, new year, which is fine. We can stay from a corner defender. before the new year. We have to sign another defender that can that can keep up mm. with those runs because Mickey Van has already had two. Can I ask a quick question to all this, right? Because yeah. there was one important factor that didn't happen in the summer that maybe, especially with what um, Ash was saying earlier, that he's, it's all about the for, formation of the way he wants to play this year. Tactics will come next year, right? But do you think this man here could be coming? It could be a key to what Ange wants to do, and maybe we'll go back for him in this summer. So this is John Kennedy. He's assistant manager at Celtic, who he tried to. He was the only person, whenever he's moved clubs, that he's tried to bring in this coach. Hmm. So do you think there's any chance that Spurs will try? Well, Spurs or Ange will try and go back in for him this summer, because obviously, as as Have Ash you said, been with Ange every club he's been at. No, only Celtic. So they met at Celtic. And he was he was the only person he's and wanted to bring. And has a history of not having the same backroom. He has, but so this, that, this is that's why that's the only reason. If he likes him, but if, if Celtic Andy wants him as his coach, yeah. bring him in, pay Celtic what they want. So yeah. this is this this is my question because he this John Kennedy was the only guy that where Andrews moved that Andrews tried to bring with him, hmm. but Celtic blocked it because Rogers wanted him. But is it a case of that actually it could be something we could be looking at next this summer as a key component to finally get over the line? Our defensive coaches are Matty Wells and Millie Jelinek. So that's two. Uh, Brian Mason is more an attack set piece coach. You've got Curtis as well, I think. Uh, yeah. I, I think um, coming back to it, I, I actually genuinely, genuinely believe that he's not trying to overcomplicate things at the moment and mm. he's still seeing who he wants in his squad. Mm. So he, he's looking at mentality. Mm. I think he's looking at um, style of play, like who can fit in the actual system, actually works for his system. Uh, and then I think he just wants us to play like this style of play, it doesn't matter who the opponent is. He wants us to get into that kind of regular mm. kind of, um, in, you know, when you're trying to change the culture of a club, if you keep chopping and changing and you keep adapting, it kind of sends out the wrong message, especially if you're trying to get the academy to play mm. a certain way 
lower down as well. I think he's trying to change the club as a whole, but it's going to take time. He can't do it quick. He can't do it really. He can't. It's going to need a few windows. I think they were saying he needs like maybe two or three summers. He needs about two or three windows, doesn't he, Ash? He needs no, about windows, two. summers. Seven windows, summers. Mm -hmm. He needs. Because he needs to get rid of a lot of the players that he well, thinks that aren't good enough. What surprises me is we play a high-risk, gung-ho style of football, yet when we get in the final third, we don't take risks. You know, yeah. he's a fright to lose the ball. Thing is, we, should, we use the wings well. We use the wings well. I that point, and I've heard that on many shows. I've, I've been yeah. listening. I've been listening. So I've heard that. We, mm. like Danny says it. Danny says we take all the risk at the back. We yeah. don't take any risk at the front. By that, I mean... We use the wings well. When we get there, we start faffing about doing the wings. We then like start passing the ball across the the, the, the zone fourteen or the hole, as it's called, in front, depending yeah, on oh, backwards yeah. and forward. It's a proven fact. The longer you pa spend passing the ball, you know, left and right, the less chance your goal scoring like chances are. Mm. I mean, mm. so, so when when our wingers have got the ball, we need people. Sometimes there's only one person in the box. So when they've got the ball. We should have more people getting in the box. Hit the cross in. You may not reach your man, but you may force a defender into a potency defensive header. It might bounce to one of you. And you'll pick up on one of those. They're not going to clear everything away perfectly when you're on the attack. And, and we don't do that. And I, and I just think, like, put more. We put more. I bet we put more crosses in the box the first 10 matches of the season. I bet we did. I don't know. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. Before you carry on, Ben. Come say goodbye. <laughs> Cheers, boys. It's always, always a pleasure to spend time with you. Always, always a good conversation. Always a good, always a good laugh. And yeah, we need more conversations where we disagree with each other. Ben, you <laughs> you're gonna, you're, you're gonna love me, Ben. You're gonna love me. <laughs> I'm not today. We've had conversations all the time. To be, I'm a mad person, so I have a different view on life in general. That's why I'm a good <laughs> coffee roaster. But thank you all for having me on as well. Marlon and Ash. No always problem. To Adrian, always love to see the bath road. Jay, finally good to have a conversation <laughs> with you. And yeah, as always, so I just what is hold, on, hold on, hold on, let me read the super chat and then you can go then you're free to mm -hmm. think. Uh, a big thank you to YGG Dressel. Yeah. Um he says big up to everyone, enjoy the format with the presentation. So Ash, mm -hmm. I'm gonna you can take credit for that. <laughs> but big up, big up, big up. Go on. Talk, Jay. Talk. Okay. So listen. So I, I, I look at I look at I genuinely look at our team differently to a lot of people because no, we know. Not, when, in the, in the, well, <laughs> was, uh, listen, you say this now, but obviously in the summer when I was when I was banging the drum, you know, people weren't listening to the beat, but, uh, but everyone's got a remix now, yeah. Okay. But it's, the way I look at this, yeah, is I don't think we're as risky as people think we are. Like. I've watched Liverpool, I've watched Arsenal, I've watched City. You, what, what is what is risky? Playing on the halfway line, pressing another team in, forcing fast turnovers. See, the reason why, and I, this is my point uh, that Adrian made. Adrian was talking about like the passing and the attackers don't take risks. Do you want to know why? Because if they lose the ball, we're done. Yeah? You've seen that in goals we've conceded where attackers have lost the ball. Kulazewski the other day gave the ball away. Bang, goal. Yeah? And that should be negated by a good number six. But the, the risks that we you can take, like Werner, Johnson, them taking their men on and stuff, you lose the ball there, that's all right. Players are in decent positions then. Do you know what I mean? It's when you see a Kulazewski cutting inside and he loses the ball in a congested area, and there's a fast turnover there, that's when you see more difficulty. When you see a Werner trying to take on his man on the outside and, and he, he loses the ball or he gets tackled, you're not getting countered. When when Johnson tries to take on his man and loses the ball, we're not getting countered and conceded a goal. But if you try and force it through the middle and you do lose the ball and there's a fast turnover with runners, then you're going to start to see issues. And with a game state, if I'm looking at the game state and I'm looking at how the team's going to adapt and stuff, talking about the training um, and perfect. There's such a thing as information overload. 
yeah, for people. And when you're changing the whole mentality of a club and you're changing the ethos of some of these players, there's a huge amount of information that goes into just these basic drills. Okay, they're just basic drills and they're not taking on tactical information, but that should make people very confident that these players are not being overcoached. They're not over-systemized. There's a large individual competency element that still exists in these players, yeah? Maybe some of them aren't good enough to execute it on a consistent basis, but it exists for a large number of them. And you see with an Arsenal team or a City team, the different game states, yeah, that you, you can have. The ability to control a game might look boring, but what it is, it's, it's control of a game. It's development. So, so if you're passing the ball around and you're not attacking, you're not creating chances, you know, sometimes a game's 90 minutes. Spurs are not in a position to be able to dominate a 90-minute game of Premier League football against anybody. So to me, dominating 40 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes, it's all progression. And sometimes you're going to play games where it's going to be very difficult. So there's elements to our game that maybe we don't have from the first 13 games now, but there's also stuff we're doing now with the cutbacks and the, the that wasn't there in the first few games either. So we've, we, so hopefully we can mesh it all together and then add more tactics on top and you're going to really see the team develop next season. But no complaints from me. I, What's me, I'm not ultra mad that Andrew said to them, I want you to figure it out because as you said before, you, do, you don't want to stifle creativity. If you stifle creativity, then you can't, that's the beauty of football. Football, sometimes when you're put under pressure, you've got to make quick decisions. Mm -hmm. That's how you kind of beat a low block. And actually, when managers look at players or they look at teams, they're like, oh, Tottenham are going to want to play right through the centre. So let's congest the centre. But if you've got a creative player, it's down to the creative player to figure his way out of that congestion, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. And the reason why we play with two inverted at times, instead of like one inverted like everyone else, mm -hmm. is to, and someone said it in the comments earlier, is to create small diamonds in the midfield yeah, and small there. triangles. Mm -hmm. And that in itself creates overloads. Now, this is a yeah. completely new system that we're doing compared to what we had from last season. Mm -hmm. So these players now, they're actually figuring it out and they're learning on the job because you can do all the tactics you want, like in training, as much as you want. Do you know what I'm saying? But you only learn in the actual game itself. When someone's pressing you at high altitude, you can do that pressing and training, but it's different mm -hmm. when in the actual mm -hmm. game. Are you panicking? All the, all the fans are on your neck. Oh, mm -hmm. pass, oh blah, 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 blah. Someone's saying, oh, you're rubbish, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. In your ear as well. As well as picking your head up, looking up, seeing when the best passes to do, etc., cetera, et cetera. So mm -hmm. th these things that are, uh, it takes time, yes. And as fans, we want it all now. Do you know what I mean? Mm. We want to have a complete domination of 90 minutes, mm. regardless of the opposition. If mm. it's a loot in town, we should be dominating them for at least 60 minutes. What mm. are you talking about? If it's Crystal Palace, I can't believe we allowed them to mm. get a goal. Do you yeah, know? How, how dare they score a 25 yard free kick against like, like, <laughs> You've you got to remember that some of these players. Oh, yeah, they, they are old. Some of them are old, but some of them are young. And this is their first season. I think um, someone brought it up that uh, at, at Nuno's reign, there's only Romero and Son are the two remaining players left from mm -hmm. that actual era. So that is, that's a, that's a, it's, it's been a high turnover, not just from Nuno, but even from Conte. Look how many players in the midfield alone is completely different. And the midfield is what dictates the tempo of the game. Mm -hmm. That's where the control happens. And now we're also at asking fullbacks that are used to playing out wide to play in these pockets where they've never been before. Mm -hmm. And now you're asking, as Ben was saying before, Madison now, he's used to being in that particular pocket where a doggy is or where Poro is. And he's like, oh, I've got to figure it out. Maybe I need to learn how to use them to do like bounce passes, yeah. do one, two, pass and move or push and pull, if that was what you used to say, Adrian, back in the day. You, you see what I'm trying to say? You're trying to open up the game. Mm -hmm. And some of the skill sets of the players, I've noticed, like Ben was saying, the skill set of the doggy, he likes to carry the ball, he likes to dribble. You've got Basuma, 
He's a ball carrier. He's a dribbler. Mm -hmm. We've got Madison. He's a ball carrier. He's a dribbler. They're not really known for passes, quick passes, incisive passes, switches to play. Mm -hmm. Whereas you've got someone like the Celso and Bentacor, and even dare I say Hoiberg, they can sit from deep and mm -hmm. create. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So when you've got those different sets of skill sets, when you do make that change mm. at a half time, it does look like a plan B. Yeah, you're right. It does look like a plan B. But actually, as Anne said before he came, he goes, I don't really have a plan B. I don't really do formations. Mm. What I do is I look at the game. And if I want to change something, I might change the character, I change the player. And that player might have a different characteristic, a different profile. And so, like, you saw Solomon that he was completely different to what Son or Richie was providing on the left. Mm -hmm. Solomon used to come on the inside. He was more of a, a dribbler, a traditional winger, whereas Richarlison and Son, they're more as a, a wide forward. Whereas mm -hmm. I think Werner is a wide forward, but he's not really good at being a wide forward. forward. So what Ange did was like, I'll take that responsibility away from you. Mm -hmm. You can just be a winger and just get it into those dangerous areas. And now... As just as a pure winger, you're actually seeing the upturn in Werner when he gets to the byline. He knows that he needs to whip it in with his with his um, with, with ever what foot he, he lands on, mm -hmm. and and that's the reason why mm -hmm. I think a lot of fans are, are kind of warming to Werner at the moment. Now, there's the other side of the fans where they're looking at Werner because that that is the next question, right, Werner? Right. Yeah, of <laughs> so let me just say my piece real quick, where they're saying where Werner. In in a front three, you need goals, um, especially against the top four or the top six teams, because when you're comparing what they in Ireland, well, yeah, <laughs> if, we're, if we're trying to bridge the gap between where we are now and to get to the next level, is Werner gonna get you there? If that makes sense, so. Marlon, I'll let you take over because I don't want to say your point because you made a great point um, offline. Mm. I just wanted you to talk about it. And it was about... The Madison enigma, the Madison thing. Just one thing on this. Yeah, go for it. He, he's getting marked a lot more, right? The people yeah. are getting close to him. So where's the inverted fallback or the other midfield that could come up can give that defender who's marking Madison something else to think about? So as Madison can lay the back off. We've seen Madison round the box. When he's doing them quick, sharp one-twos with players or the little lofted chips, he's great at that. He's not a long ranger like Ericsson is, is he? He's no. not that sort of a player. But well, he's he very, very skillful. He huh? used, yeah, used to be, actually. He yeah. used to be. I don't, I don't know why he's still right. Then well, like, I must be like, you know, Put it down to old age, right? No, no, no. no. <laughs> you're not, you're not, like, Adrian, you're not wrong. Like, <laughs> like, he seems to have decided in his infinite can, wisdom to become you can more assist of a Madison, like, to be more effective that way, though, like by having someone get if it's an inverted fallback or a midfielder, you don't want to lose your shape if we've got any shape as such. But I mean, like, and uh, just sort of get, get a bit close, get five yards off him, like so he can go right. I'm passing the ball, and then then Madison can go. And then if a player wants to tug on him, he's got to pull his shirt or do something like that, you know? So, yeah, I agree. It's the movement of the, the players in front of them that are key in terms of him trying to find space because then mm -hmm. to drag players away from him and make them have something to think about and that in itself will create space and that might create a mm -hmm. one v one and i see madison also just to add to your point as a bit like hulu sometimes uh he, he he can't play the 10 but sometimes he can play the midfielder as a right mid or a left mid if that makes sense mm -hmm. like a wide mid and in italy they call that the, the mezzala where you're a hybrid you're not necessarily a winger but you live you're in half the, spaces, no? Yeah, you're in the yes, where you live in the half spaces. That's where it is because in the half space in that channel, you're in between the defensive line, the back four, and you're in between the other line of defense, which is the midfield four. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If at most teams they do a four four two setup, and that's where Madison becomes a headache because he's in that space in between those particular lines, and then that's when he's asking questions. Now people prefer it. Because they see like um, your, your, your Hoibergs passing direct and switching the play. Like I said it before, Spurs have the lowest amount of um, passes in terms of switches of play. If you look at Liverpool, they're number one, Luton are number two. So when people see um, Hoiberg come on or even the Celso come on and they just switch the play, you're like, that's what we need. Someone that'll pass it straight into the channels, into the wingers. 
And then we look more direct and we're more, you know, we're, we're more front footed in that way. Instead of like doing three or four passes and it looks slow and lethargic and looks too hard to, 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 um, Nice, it. nice little pass for him to Bentacor for that little deft header across the box for Porro to come in and yeah, shoot. He's becoming that wide midfielder yeah. and he's getting into the, the byline and then he's cutting it back. And that's what you want to see. You don't want to see him just operate in one single pocket. You want him to kind of move he around. A similar thing for England against Brazil when he pulled it back for uh, Superman to score from Real Madrid. I forget his name there. Bellingham. Bellingham, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So back, back to uh, Marlon's point. Marlon was saying... Um, in, in, in the back room that people are saying Werner was to replace um Hill. what's his face Brian Hill. I'll let you finish it off. Go on, say your point. No, no, and I and I think everyone's missing the point with that because he he hasn't come here to replace Brian Hill because Brian Hill was sent out on loan, right? And would have been gone out on loan if something didn't happen in late in the summer. Since Timo Werner is effect, effectively trying is here to replace Perisic, and that's mm. what everyone's forgetting. Now Perisic, how many assists did he get last year? And considering he was playing left back, but when Ange started him at the beginning of the season at Sheffield United, he came on, on as that left inside forward, got the assist, but got injured, right? So my question to both of you is, right, look, we're going to sign him. We know we're going to sign him, but mm. would you would you, would you, you sign him? Or would you or would you look elsewhere? I would sign him. Go on, elaborate. So, so the reason why I would sign him is, is the fact of, like the way I look at it now is that let's say you don't sign him. Yep. Okay. You're already going to have to sign. We're going to sign a flagship winger. That's pretty. Yes. That's what, that's what everybody says. Yeah. So yes. we're, yeah. we're looking at we have 40, to. 50, yeah. 60 yeah. million pound winger. Okay. That's coming in. Right. Yep. So unless you want to sign two wingers. Yeah. For the same position. Right. Yeah, and therefore you have an issue of score. Listen, devil's advocate, like you can say, oh my god, players are gonna get injured, but you don't go into the season hoping that one of your players is gonna oh, be injured. Not. Yeah, so you're gonna have one player, ideally, touch wood, yep. that is gonna play 40, 50 games, and then you're gonna have another player that's gonna play 20, 30. Plus, you've got players like Son who can play out there and Solomon, Rich Richie can play out there at a push. So the idea around it is how can I blood two players in a position? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It, all the games are high level. We're playing Champions League, ideally, and league trying to push for, um, you know, to get as high as we can, maybe try and break 80 points, see how the season goes, yada, yada, yada. So how, how am I going to get two left wingers, develop them, learn Angie's style, blend into the squad from a personality point of view and then share minutes and both of them develop simultaneously it what, doesn't make does, sense this isn't an argument yeah. but this but does it have to be two wingers it, we, not, need, okay, well, we need we need right yeah. let's let's take johnson <laughs> johnson's been bought right that's the full, that's the wing that's the high level winger so we whether got, people agree with it or not that's right? what he is and he's doing the job so okay. you're, you said we're going to buy another one which is going to be on the left yeah. but do we not need a center forward no we, yeah. we, we're gonna we, we, we do we need a striker we, well, we the, do the thing is, is like it's not it's not necessarily it's and, about sorry so one, one thing before you carry on and just to put this in your head yeah. as well right son's going to be 32 this year okay right he's not going to be like let, let's be completely honest with son right his form does go up and down right because he is traveling here there and everywhere and he is as as rightly he has to go everywhere with his nation he's the captain and everything like that but it is taking its toll right mm -hmm. and we're going to have more games next year right so if you're if Werner is son's replacement right in the sense oh. or richarlison is or kulu is that for me Werner is not up to scratch when it comes to well, I get I get the assist part, but he on Sunday was the first, I, I gave a man the match on Sunday. I did right. I'm openly I will openly say when he's played well, right? But he has he isn't going to come up against Nico Williams all the time where he's just letting him go past because in the other games he does it once and doesn't do it again for the rest of the game. Yeah, but so okay, so what I'm going to push back on here is first of all yeah. with the winger, I expect the winger to be a two sided winger. Me and Ash broke this down one time and we looked and basically it's. Nico Williams or Rafinha, 
basically. Those are the I mean, Nico those, those are the two. <laughs> I always forget, forget the right backs got the same. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the two. <laughs> yeah no, we actually yeah. looked at loads and loads and loads of like data yeah. on this. We, we, we broke it down to Rafinha or Nico Williams. They were the standout options for players that had a certain. Level. So I believe one hundred percent we're bringing one of these two players in this summer. That's what that's what I believe, yeah. and. I think that if you bring in a Werner, uh, Williams is a two-sided winger. Rafinha is a two-sided winger. Both of them slightly. Yeah. Rafinha is a pure two-sided winger. Do you know what I mean? Either side. Nico is slightly more to the left. Mm -hmm. But when we're looking at this and you're saying, oh, Werner this and Werner that, the way I see it is he's a starting winger for us right now. Okay? So he's, he's our starting left winger. Yeah, right? which is... Um... A bit sketchy. It's yeah. not. It's not. It's, it's not. It's not. He's a stop. He's a stopgap. Which and to be fair, he's done well to be the stopgap for we need right now. But if we, yeah. like you said, if you're looking to push on next season, right? Yeah. We let, let's take the top three. Right? We're gonna. They're, they're the three we're trying to catch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Right. If yeah, am I wrong? So yeah, let's yeah. look at. Right. So let's look at their winners or their third. So they've got their First front person. three. Yeah, you've got their front three, which I'm not comparing Werner to. I'm comparing yeah. Werner to the person who can come on, right? So I'm comparing him to Trossard, yeah? Okay. Jota, because Jota usually is the one that comes on for Liverpool. Well, 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 the, yeah, well, okay. but, yeah, but these are the people that I'm comparing him to. Oh, well, why, right? they, oh, why, do you, why do you compare him to Gakpo? Gakpo, because Gakpo plays more central. Yeah, but that, that's the that's the level of forward he would be in in the the, the way I'm looking at but it. I just not played him there. That's no, that's the reason why. He's our, he's our current starting left winger because we haven't got anybody better because Son's playing up front and Solomon's injured. So there's no there's no one else to play left wing. Yeah, but if yeah. he's yeah, but he said he but if he goes in the middle, which he has he's played there twice, he's come on and he's then been moved out to the left. Because he's been so ineffective up the top. That's 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 that's, that's fine. So look at it from the point of view of you. Yeah. I'm saying he's he's a left winger, yeah, for the team, right? Yep. And he's he's a starting left winger in a, in the fourth best team in the league. Okay. So these are statements of fact, right? So now, if you look at our team, look at let's our eleven. Let's, let's hope we finish fourth. Because <laughs> 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 otherwise, it's fifth. Listen. <laughs> if, 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 <laughs> Villa should not outpoint us between the, now and no, now. I agree. I, I do you know agree. what I mean? Like the players need to start owning some expectations for yeah, a change. Course, they, play, they, they play with no expectations all season. Let's have a few expectations. Yeah, to now they've got one. But the yeah, exactly. Make sure you finish four for us. If, but, yeah, go on, carry on. I was just saying that if if I look at it then, and I say so, Werner's a starting starting winger in a team that's fourth. Now, when you look at the team, you can clearly see: get a top six, get a top left winger. Yeah, and the floor of this team goes bang. Yeah, as simple as that. Get a top six, get a top left wing, and the floor goes up. Now, those two players that currently play in those positions become bench players or rotation players. But yes. the, the thing is, is if you don't sign Werner, who is the player that drops to the bench to, be, to become the rotation player? You have to buy a new player to replace that player, and there's no logic to buy that. Just, just, just. Get Werner and then buy the top winger. Yeah, but, on top. Yeah, but, but if if say it's Kulu, Richarlison, and Son become your bench players for talking purposes, say we do go by the left wing and the striker, well, there's two players there what, who already. We're not Richard, sure. you, which strikers Son, can Son, on Richarlison. But, but, Son, but, Son, but Son can play there. Yeah, Son's a striker for me. Son's our number nine. But Son can play left wing and is a better left winger than Werner. No, 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 no. He's he's 32 years old. Stop. You can't have him doing night shifts on the left wing at 32. But he isn't going to do night shifts on the left wing. Respect, respect Sonny. No, 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 more night buses yeah, for Sonny. No, but what you're saying is, right, is we're going to sign that elite left winger, right? Yes. So Sonny is not going to be expected to play left wing all the time. But there will be certain what? times, if to say the injury does happen, that Son then can go out there and if yeah, 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 of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, course, yeah. so in that sense, I'm looking at Werner going. So, where's he realistically? He's going to become the third choice winger. He's going to right, and he's going to become the third choice winger on the right. So, no, where not necessarily, not necessarily because we don't. That's know how I'm looking at it. No, but we don't know which winger we're going to get because you might get a right winger, and now Johnson and Werner are going to share left wing duties. Do you see what I mean? I mean oh, if that happens, I'll be, I'll be literally fuming. But yes. Yeah, but, but, it's, but the thing is, is, it's not, it's so far for me, 
And I know okay, it's not about the money uh, for Werner. I don't no, care. It's not, it's not, I, I don't care it's, it's not like, the, like, the, as it's, as yeah, it's more the that, chances he misses, though, in, in important moments of games. That's probably... Yeah, but the, 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 the thing, thing about the, with those missed chances sometimes is the, no, no one else gets them. Like, it's funny that Werner gets those missed chances and misses them. Obviously, he should be scoring them. But when other players play in those positions, they don't get as many... They don't do as much as him in that position, so it's almost a thing that you have to, you have to, you have to take the good with the bad with someone like Werner. Yeah, but and, no, and I, and, do you know what? I I agree with your statement. I actually totally agree with what you just said. He gets in those positions, but the worrying thing is, right, is that if he's getting in those positions and still missing them, there's no point in getting in those positions. To an extent, because the thing is, <laughs> because is that, he's not he's not being effective to the team, is he? <laughs> Of course, absolutely. And the thing is, is that uh, like there's, there's misses he'll do. Like the miss, uh, was it against Palace? Was it the one on one where he took it down? Oh, so yeah. Well. yeah, I was like, oh my god, Timo. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But he still he backed in the second half, right? When mm. Johnson laid it on, laid in front of yeah, 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 but that's my point. He keeps I, going. Mm. Like he can dribble the ball out of play. He can get tackled, and he'll keep going. That's a mentality you need in the squad. It, that's a, I'm not that's sure. A, I'm go not go sure go we're going to prioritize a left winger. I'm not sure about this. I don't know which side we're going to prioritize. Because, I'm just because, saying that we're going to because buy I think Werner will be kept just for the he's he's a cheap option. But then then you're looking at most of the transfer talk that's been going on has been from the very beginning of the season has been central defender and midfielder, and we would like a striker. That's it. You know, there's been a lot of traction on Albert Gummonson of Genoa. I don't know if Ash has done a profile on him or not mm -hmm. uh, recently. You could get him for like 26 million or something. Yeah. And then if you're looking at defenders, I mean, Lloyd Kelly and Tosin Adarabaya, they're on free transfers in the summer. Yeah. Clubs are going to be queuing up for them. They've only got to give them wages. And if you're looking for a defensive midfielder, you could do no worse than getting NDD at Leicester, whose, oh. whose contract is up in the summer as well. And we're also looked at Jewsbury Hall there, haven't we? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, don't I, I like, I like Lloyd Kelly. For the idea of playing left back and centre back, and left yeah, centre right, back, right. and, and, and he's quick, and, and he's quick. Sorry, he is. I have to go and yeah. have a look at him. Uh, but look, just the one thing I just want to say on, because um, obviously breaking down on Werner is that it's not. I just look at it from from the point of view of value to the squad, and I think he does provide value to the squad. Can you bring somebody in who's going to provide more value to the squad? Yeah, sure. But the thing is, is that if you're going to bring a starting left winger in and you can do what you're saying, we can shuffle some, but you basically, you don't, for me, you want a specialist player. So if you're going to specialistly say Son's a striker mm -hmm. and then say that Richarlison's a striker, you want two players in every position. Do you see what I mean? So it's more like you want two left wingers. But but I think we would we would be much better off. I don't know what the budget is. I've looked at I've listed 10 players we could sell, but I mean like I don't know what the budget is, but if you brought in a striker, whether it's a Santa Mon Gimenez, you know, uh whether it was Dusan Vlahovic, you know, whether it was uh Omar Marmouche from Eintracht Frankfurt, who we looked at, you know, Albert Gummonson or whatever it is, if they can score half of the big chances we've missed this mm -hmm. season, then Werner stays in the side. I want I want nine goals for my winger. I want nine. Nine league goals. One in four has always been considered a good strike rate, you know? So one yeah. in four. I mean, even Decky's not had the greatest of time, but he's got six, you know, and Johnson's got five, isn't he? And seven yeah. assists, yeah. something. So he's doing quite well, actually, for the, for the criticism I've given him. We know we're going for a midfielder and we know we're going for a central defender. And I'm pretty my, my, sure we'll go for a strike, those three first, unless yeah. a wild opportunity produces itself from somewhere yeah. and, we, and we divert from our cool. path. I think they're going to be our three first priorities. Adrian, and then it wouldn't surprise me. I'd love a candy essence from Juventus. Who can play would, Adrian, game. would you would you sign just a quick one? Would you sign that? Well, I know we're gonna sign it, but would you sign him? Yes or no? I'm 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 gonna flip flop here because like Look, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna ask this question until the end of the season anyway. So everyone's gonna flip flop. <laughs> yeah. If he it's Which, just it's just trying would anyone sign concerns me? Who? Rashford instead of Werner. Uh, yeah, if Rashford was on the market, I'd take him all day long. Yeah, I would. 
special player, special profile. Yeah, the, I mean, quality, the level we need to go for. If you push me in a Conan Vernon, I'd say no, I don't want him. Do you know what? Someone actually put someone in the chat, and I was thinking, you know what? He's only just come back from injury, and I, I he wouldn't be some. He'd probably be someone that I probably would go on our left wing, and that's in Buemo. Hundred percent, I agree. There's something, about, yeah. there's something yeah. about him that he will finish. Like Ash just was put there on like, the XG is what we're fourth. Was it yeah. second or fourth? In Bring the it back up. Yeah, uh, yeah. we right. were. Uh, and Buemo would be like our Jota. Yeah, yeah, that, and yeah. that's and, that, right. and that's the sort that's right. when, when when and that's when you know and that's exactly what I'd be looking for for Werner to be if he's going to come in. Mm. We're, we're actually third in terms of XG, by the way. We're actually third in terms of actual yeah. XG itself. We're third. Yeah, and for goals, we, were, for goals was actual third. This is from open play as well, guys. Yeah, yeah. So if, we're, if we're not going to improve on our defensive situation, say we're going to play exactly the same, and our defense is going to remain the same. That means we do have to be more clinical in front of goal. Yeah, right. And if we're going to be more clinical in front of goal, let's all be honest here. Werner's not the guy we're going to be relying on for goals. We have to rely on own goals and stuff like that. To like, let's be honest, Luton, right? When that own goal went in, if that goes to Werner's feet, most of us are putting our hand, heads in our hands, going, "He's going to miss that." Which yeah. we shouldn't be in that situation because I, I get what you're saying. He's so yeah. good to be getting those positions, but it's pointless when he is missing them. Like but Fulham. But the Fulham, the Fulham, the Fulham, let, let me just add one little bit though. The thing yes. is, is that. When you look at the team, though, I look at it like, for me, if you remember Arsenal before they bought Zinchenko and Jesus, yeah, that's yeah. literally where we are. That's literally the point where we are in comparison to them. So two players coming into the first team will lift our floor similarly like them, but their team also just got better naturally as well. So like, he's a great. Me, to, he's great to be in the change room. I give him that. He's well, 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 team, what, yeah. So what, what I'm trying to say is, is that the squad from this season moving forward, you might as well get him so he's part of the squad. Then you that you're moving forward with. You can always improve on it next summer. But even from a business point of view, 15 million and flipping him for 25 or 30 in a year's time, if you want to upgrade on him. That's good business, especially if you're going hold on, to... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you say we'll get rid of Werner for 20... He ain't going for that. No one's going to buy why would he? Why would he not? He's already, he's already back at 30 million value. No, he's not. No, I would he, say he was. Uh, no, no, come on. If if someone... If, oh, oh, like, what, what, hold on, what? Come on, he's not... He's okay, not okay, Werner. okay. Give me, explain, like, give, give, me, give me a player of Werner's profile um, that, 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 would, that you'd get for less than 30 million. Just give me one player, just one. Well, someone who can't finish, who's just. I mean, you know, it, it, it's both, I just thought, like obviously. <laughs> but, like, but, but you're saying he's worth thirty million, right? I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, I think he's worth thirty million in the market. Oh, he's not. What if he look? No one thought. No one wants him at sixteen, apart from Spurs. No, so we, we, we we've got him. We've rehabilitated. We put a bit of shine on it a little bit now. Oh no, like, we haven't. Of everyone's course, still we not, have. We have. Oh, we, we not haven't. put a little bit. Of shine. Right, no, we haven't. <laughs> we have not. All we've done is gone. He can cross the ball, and if he's played in a certain position, right? So, so if we if we didn't we didn't have a deal in place, if we didn't have a deal, exact same thing at Leipzig. If if, (laughs) right, so so by the way, he went to Chelsea for fifty million. By the way, right? So yeah, when he was scoring, yeah. So what I'm saying now is, if we didn't have a deal in place, based on how he was playing now this season, how much do you think they'd be asking him for? for Asking for him? What for the way he's been playing? They would not be asking for. They wouldn't be asking. Surely. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They know they'd be getting nowhere near that because no one, nobody, nobody in their right mind, right? There's no football club on this planet who would pay thirty million for Werner right now. Nah, bro. I'm listen. I, I, I don't think. If, if, if Spurs parted their money with thirty million right right now, right, with for Werner, yeah, all of us would. I'm not. I'm no, no. I'm not. Even you would be. I'm I'm saying yeah that you have to go off market rate yeah like on market rate yeah what players of his quality are what what are they going for of his quality yeah what, what, the, like, the price give, the price give, give me, the, give me, the give price, me an example the price of a player has been 15 16 million because he's not scoring goals I, I I I don't know man I I, I think I think, I think you guys are. I think you guys are doing him a bit of a disservice. No, 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 no. But you, he's not. He is definitely not worth thirty million right now. Ah, uh, I don't know, man. I think he'd be close. 
I don't, mate, he wasn't before he signed for us. He he, he wasn't worth. 15 I, think, I think the thing is, is that every everything everything goes off certain time value versus shine up value. For example, yeah. someone said Ilanga. So what did Ilanga go to Forest for? Uh, let me find out. And what would you say Ilanga's worth now? Probably say probably he's younger. His market yeah, value, know, what's, mar what's he, what's he like market work? value. So apparently, his market value. I'll go by transfer market. His market value right now is twenty-two million. Who's Verners? No, Elangas. Elangas, twenty-two million. Yeah, mm. like, I wouldn't pay. I wouldn't pay that for him. But there might be a club out there that might. I, I don't work. think you can get Elanga for twenty-two million. <laughs> I think he cost forty plus. But that's because he's younger. But this is Premier League. Okay, fair enough. Like, if that, if that's his, age is, his, his age is going to come into it. Fair, fair. I'm, I'm just going off what, what, what I'm looking at, what I think players are worth and stuff like that. And <laughs> looking at, looking Jay, at, for once, well, I'm going to say this. Like, God leave he's in charge of. No, no, I'm, <laughs> listen, no listen. I'm, listen, I'm, li listen, I'm not saying that I would And I'll read that respect for No, <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm going off market value versus, that's what I'm thinking, yeah, like, yeah, he's a, he's a player performing for a top four team in the Premier League. Yeah, like I don't know what you guys are. You guys, have you guys not been watching the Premier League? The transfer fees that the clubs charge. Yeah, but like, that's a pack, pack, yeah. But you, if we're going by what happened in January, and as yeah. said, and as everything that's going on with FFP, PSL, yeah, I don't like think that. you're this, taking this, into consideration this the wages. The wages that Werner's on, he'd be on about 170 grand a week. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Fair. fair okay. So that fair affects right, the transfer listen, price. That listen, affects I, the transfer I, price. I'm, listen, I'm I'm looking at it from this point of view, right? That, As, look, actually, this is a great point. Actually, yeah. before you carry it, everything is worth what the purchaser is willing to pay for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that 15 I, but, 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 but none of us. But, but no, we're not. We're not. We're never going to be able to resell Werner for more. Danny, than stop. Million. Danny, relax, man. Fucking hell, man. You keep yak, yak, yakking. No one cares, man. What? Relax, man. Relax. We we heard you the first time about Werner. Just yeah. chill out, bro. Chill out. It's nearly midnight, man. The right. Saudis might pay that sort of money for him. I don't, I don't think they want to. Carlson to them as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I, don't I don't understand. I don't understand what you, well, people are asking. How much are you asking for Gibbs White then? What 50, 60? You think they're going to sell Ilanga for what? Like he's 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 a top player for them too. Yeah, MGW is around. Um... 60, 55? Yeah. 55, 60. Uh, yeah, the English tax and all the rest of it. Unless more than four get relegated. All right, all right. Did any, of you think, did any of you think Havertz was worth 65 million when he was leaving last time? I, no. I, still, I still don't. I, well, that's my point. Did you think Mount was worth 50-something million? English tax, Man United. Okay. All right, stupid. okay. English, <laughs> fair, fair, fair enough. All right, all right. Fair enough. <laughs> Come on, any more? <laughs> uh, I'm, listen, I'm just going off market rate. Yeah, I saw change. Yeah, but, Jay, but Jay, on no you know, you know, market rate yeah. this summer is going to change dramatically. Yeah. yeah. So, listen, it's, it's, I, I, so it's not going to be the same. Yeah. Like, listen, I'm going off worth versus what somebody would pay. Like, yeah. I think to a club, like, there's a certain value to a certain player of a club. Now, I think that you can buy young players, but they're not proven. So you're paying you, the, the the risk is 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 in the transfer fee. Yeah, I think that is. if you have a player that's starting for a certain level of club, it's funny because if we went to go and if we went to Aston Villa and asked for some of their players, yeah, some of some of their players that are in the starting eleven or in or in or around that starting eleven, you'd be you'd be staggered. They were asking for what eighty million pounds for Douglas Luiz the other month. Like if you ask them about Leon Bailey, I wonder what they quote. Ask him about Watkins. I wonder what they quote. Now, I'm not trying to say Werner's of these guys' levels or he's played as, le as well as them, but there's a hierarchy of fee that people just disregard when it comes to Tottenham players. People always just be like, oh, just give this guy away for free. They all just throw oh, a free transfer. In. Oh, it's crap. No, 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 no. But with Werner, no, no, no. I get, I, I, no, I do understand that, right? And like, but with Werner, if there's no way, no way in hell right now that he is worth to anybody, right, will pay 30 million for him. I'd, he's done I, well listen, enough. I, yeah. He's done well enough for the full yeah. club. He's done well enough to be worth... I, as, I, as, as, as a member but, as a member of Tottenham Hotspur, that I think that's what his value would be. Like, as, as, if he was a top, if he was a contracted Tottenham Hotspur footballer, that's yeah. what his value would be. 
Right, while we're playing Sale of the Century, right? <laughs> while we're playing Sale of the Century, I want to run these past you. I just want you to give me totals. And Jay, you good at maths, you can add it up. Right? All right, I got my, I got, I got, I got right, the old okay. calculator. I'm busting right. out the calculator. Right, okay, right, too, right. Just in case. How much do you reckon we'd get for Skip? He's got no future at Spurs. We're bringing midfielders and oh, he can't well. even get the match day squad. Good, good afternoon to you as well. Work, Murray. How, long do you, how much do you reckon we'd get for Skip? Skip, 10? 20 million. You serious? Bro, I just, bro, yes. Why do you just want to give our players away for free? All right, then you had the 20 mil up. Let's sell okay. so. Let's sell so. Uh, I'm going to say. Alex, McAllister I, went I, from I, 35 I, I, million I'm, to I'm, Liverpool. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say 12 million plus add ons, maybe 15. So, 35 mil, yeah? Roden. I'm just thinking about Le Celso because we've got one Roden. year left. In, this won't take years. long. Roden. Uh, okay, so I'll go with. Uh, Rodon, maybe 16, 17. Cool, that's a bit much, I think. So what was it, 35? So now you're talking 50 mil we got in the bank. Regulon? Oh, my God. Six. <laughs> Six. Five. So five. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, though. But he just produced, like, didn't he just mm. produce two assists against... Um, did he? Yeah, against yeah. the weekend. In the uh, if people want to pay cash for him, though, but they just yeah, want to But yeah, you're sitting there yeah. praising up Werner. Come on, yeah. it's got to be worth more than that. No, 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 no. No. I'd be happy with four million. Four All right, million then. pounds. So we're up roughly at 55 million. Gil? Okay, I'll give you five. Okay, what else we got? Gil? Five million, I'll take. 60 mil then. And Dombele to South Saudis? I'll take one million for a Dombele. Okay, just we're to take forgetting his completely. Spence? We're on 60 mil. Spence? I'll take nine million. What was I at? 50 or was it? 69. Emerson? Emerson, if you'll go, I'll say... 25. I think he's kept value. So now we're talking at 90 mil. Parrot? I'll take five. What, we're at 100 mil now? We're at 100 now. Hoiberg? Uh, I'd like 15, but I'm not sure people will 115. pay that. 115. Tanganga at mil? Um, Tanganga? I'll take five and an add-on. So 120. Richarlison to Saudi. Uh, We've got to get replacement. We're not selling if we don't get replacement for something. So go on. Richard, Richarlison to Saudi. Um, oh, we could get 50 if it's Saudi. So 170 million, yeah? <laughs> I love the way we went it's a bit Saudi. much. I mean, <laughs> I went for, I got for about 90 actually. But I mean, like, <laughs> but I'm just saying. We obviously want. I got 170, I got 170 million, million here, mate. We will get. Let's, we will let's get, spend it wisely. <laughs> we will get. We will get money in for players, even though the fee's not paid. Yeah, up yeah, no, yeah, don't, don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get to Napoli fee. as well. No, I'm no, joking. I'm joking. I'm sorry. Just saying, and who, Kulu's and been to Napoli, by the way. Has it? Kulu to yeah, I see that, and yeah, and other rubbish. Ozzyman to Chelsea. Look, Chelsea, right? 90 million pound in debt they showed on one year. They showed 120 in the other. They're already double the 105 over three years, and they got one year to reduce that. Yeah. They're at 210. They're at 210 mil loss at the moment, mm. and they got yeah. one year to reduce it. Can I, can I just want to say, like, because because obviously as well, like, I've seen some of the comments, and some of you, I would just like to say that Spurs fans, in my existence of being a Spurs fan and being social, are very, very poor judges of football players. And I... You can't say oh, 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 I can. I can, I can, and I, I can, and I will. They make sweeping assumptive statements. So... What we're trying to do here? Hold on, no, 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 no because we will be spending all of this money on players every time and we'd be selling our players for absolute peanuts. Why are people thinking Skip's not worth 20 million? Yeah? You we, just said break your five. <laughs> Mate, it's about what people are willing to pay. Do, do you... Okay, who is willing... Who will pay us more than five million pounds sterling? Okay, okay. okay. I can name, name the team. Brentford, 
Seville. Teams in Spain will. Plus, who's the no. best to pay me for Skip? Do you, do you, okay. okay. Do you, AJ, do you, name me the club that's going to pay me 20 million for Skip right now, please. Oh, God. Fuck. No, they're not. You know they're not. Oh my god, listen. Like, listen. I like Skip. Skip's I, a nice listen, guy. Lucen, Lucen would definitely take Skip. Make In championship. Yeah. yeah, Norwich yeah. would. Yeah. They'd take him yeah. back. Listen, who's, who's coming up? Who's coming up? Who's, who's coming up? Like, mm-hmm. Leeds are oh, Leeds would love an Oliver Skip. Leeds, Skip mm-hmm. Gray Pivot. Skip Gray Pivot. To people, this is Jay contradicting Cinema. himself in one Cinema. sentence. He's Leeds the first man like the rest of us. <laughs> Leeds will use all their money to buy Roden, though, won't they? They spend ten million. Yes, Leeds, Leeds are going to buy Roden. But listen, they can spend that money. But what I'm trying to say is, is like at least Skip would probably start for a good seventy to eighty percent of the league. Yeah, let's be let's be honest. Let's not be critical. Let's be really? fair. Like people act like it's so easy to play for Tottenham Hotspur. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not no, easy. No, 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 can if Skip, Skip has done well at Spurs, right, let me look at the league. Let me, I'm gonna look at the league table. Okay, like, but let's let's second. Well, yeah. the, the other issue is, okay. guys, there's one other issue here. We, we can go out and buy eight homegrown players for the Premier League rules, that's okay. Yeah, but for Europe, you've got to have four homegrown yeah. academy training. We've only got six. We've got two mm. goalkeepers who aren't gonna make it, Austin and Whiteman. Then you've got Sessignon, Skip, mm. uh, Sessignon, Skip, shit. Uh, Parrot, because he's 22 now. Yeah. And oh shit, I forgot the other one. Let's have a look here. Let me go. Why are you not thinking of that, Ash? Let's get on to the last question of the night, right? Mm-hmm. And oh, and Spence. No, 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 not Spence. No, not Spence. You ain't been with us that long. Let's let's let's. Oh, get Tanganga. Tanganga. Sorry, Tanganga. 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 Yeah. Let's get into Newcastle. So we've got to keep four of those. Yeah. We can get let's rid get, of two. Let's yeah. get into Newcastle. Oh, Hoiberg yeah. and Newcastle, right? Mm-hmm. I think everyone's saying Ben Tekor should start. Yeah. Mm. I think everyone, the two players that everyone's talking about is uh, Hoiberg and Bentacol. Bentacol, we all think will start. Would you bring Biss back for Newcastle or would you let Hoiberg start? I would let Hoiberg start um, <clears throat> only because I'm a firm believer in, um, I don't want to have complacency in the squad. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't want to. <clears throat> anyone's untouchable so for that reason i would i would bring hoiberg and just to let basuma know that you know what there's there's certain things where we need to rotate not every time you look at look up you're going to be um first choice and and he's not one of the captains so in my opinion i would like to see yes, I, sure he does. I would like to see basuma um coming on for like 20 30 minutes and see what what he gives us in that midfield if we're like depending on the game state depending on what we need at the time i just want to see because obviously hoiberg he hasn't started very well um in my opinion uh, when he starts games he hasn't looked that great but um i think i want to see what he looks like i want to see what basuma looks like coming off the bench i want to see how he responds i want to see his mentality how he is as a person as a player if he has to come on so um yeah I, i'm gonna start um I want to start Heiberg. I'm trying to find him. There he is. <clears throat> I'm going to be a bit different. Yeah, so I'm going to put him there. But go on. I wouldn't play Heiberg. Go on. I would play Saar, Madison and Kulisevsky. You want to see 6-1 again, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. Well, no, no. obviously I'd play Bent- Bentacore, actually, and I'd probably drop Madison. I'd play Saar, Bentacourt and Kulisevsky and I would drop Ooh. this. So, because that would give us more solidity in a away game, a lot more solidity away. You in the comments as well, I want to hear <laughs> your opinions on this midfield three that we're going for. So you're saying Bentacourt for who? Madison? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, no. Bentacourt, I'm playing Saar, Bentacourt and Kulisevsky. So oh, so Kulu, Hoiberg, Kulu left the number 10, yeah? Take Hoiberg off for Bentacourt in mm. and take Madison off. Yeah. And put Kulu in wherever Kulu mm. is. 
is. Uh, I can't, uh, Adrian, you can't, you can't, there's no, uh, Adrian, come on, you've, you've seen how Kulazewski's played in the last few weeks, yeah. Even his own mother couldn't advocate him being in the side you know, against Newcastle. <laughs> Even she would be like, hey, I'm baby, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it's, it. His sister will be on the phone right now oh, going, yeah, baby, 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 next week, baby, next <laughs> week. <laughs> He works well. He works well with Poro. They'd be interchanging anyway. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, so I, you're I, saying I, you want to see Kulu? Anyway, <clears throat> like that is that what you're saying? And uh, maybe have. Some... No, you can't talk. You failed on the prices, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm just a <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Jay, who would you have started? Okay, so. I'm. I'm a. I'm, I don't want to be re re reward. Like first of all, Kulazeski needs to needs. He needs those. He needs to get some splinters in his butt for the next few weeks. Yeah. Don't don't. He needs to not worry about playing any more than twenty minutes for the next few times. And he needs to work on what he's his decision making on the break because he's getting chances on the break. So just you know just compose himself. But I think that the performance in the second half against. Um, Against uh, God, who did he play? Um, Forest, not in Forest. It was it was good enough to warrant Benson, Cor, and Hoiberg coming in. We know that they can work well together. Like they 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 played they played as a mm. team under Conte. They haven't really been fit fit together or in favour since um, since Ange um, since Ange has really come in. But but I think. Hoiberg and Benson call, we know they complement each other well. We know that they know each other's game. It's it's probably as good an opportunity as we've had all season for to play these people who are in who are fit, who could potentially, you know, get a little bit of rhythm and form. Mm -hmm. I would go Benson call Hoiberg with um, Madison in front of them. And um yeah, the rest of the team the same. That's how I would go. Ains will play Madison, but I mean I would I would rest him. Or bring him on late, but oh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, Ellie. Ellie, he needs to feel those splinters, like you know those ones with the little boo boo on the finger, like oh, like and you get a little pin to try and pick it up. Like he, I, I, like I'm a, I'm not a Kulu fan. I don't know if I'm a Kulu fan anymore. The reason yeah. why I don't know if I'm a Kulu fan is because he's like, you know when, you, <laughs> no, it's not even that. It's like, you know, like when you're a kid and you've got toys. And then you see somebody else's toys and you're like, oh, that's a nice toy, you know. And that's what it's like with left foot right wingers in the Premier League. Do you know what I mean? Everybody's got a nice left footed right winger. So you're looking at your left footed right winger like, oh, OK, it's not it's not bad. You know, it's not, it's not horrible. But then I'm seeing Elise and Saka and Salah and Cole Palmer and you're like, oh, OK. Yeah, Cole, Palmer. Okay, cool. Cole Palmer's the one. <laughs> That's, yeah. and that, that, that's, my, that's my point. He's he's still a baby and he's got plenty of time to develop. I just wonder whether the project is going to move faster than his development. Mm. Ash, do you want to finish on this? Uh, no, just trying to get everyone's thoughts, to be fair. Obviously, I've shown there's... A, there's, there's w w This is what we normally do. We normally mm -hmm. have... Because um, we were talking about if we could have... Arrest I'm fair, David. I'm fair. <laughs> I have a rest offense of um, Van der Ven, Hoiberg, and Romero. And could we swap maybe if we put Bentacor on this side for, for whatever reason and we swap Poro for Madison? I think people would want to see either that or maybe Udogi. Um, and then Poro in, in, the, in, in the hole. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, Bentacore there because obviously the attack. I'm not worried about Murphy. They've got a lot of injuries, but they've got Murphy, Isaac's obviously a threat. And Gordon's and, out. And uh, Gordon, say again. Gordon's out. He's suspended. Is Gordon suspended? Oh, oh that's ma that's magnificent news. Oh my lord, <laughs> that's fantastic news. Remember, he got sent off. Right, so, um, so yeah, we've lucked out there. <laughs> So, who do you think will come off for Gordon? Then that's what I'm going to ask them. Who do you think would they, they've got? Um, who have they've got? They've they could bring on Richie. You say Richie for Gordon? 
Um, they might play. They might actually play. Will uh, Almiron might. Is he not going to bar? Is Barnes? Oh, Barnes might be injured. Yeah, Barnes. Sorry, Barnes. 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 Harvey Barnes has just come back in. He. So, yeah. Barnes will come in. We'll take Gordon out. So let's put it like that. Hey, if two yeah. tactics is still in the chat, who's going to play there, mate? <laughs> <laughs> was he in the chat? He was in the chat. Yeah. What's, what's your... well, I was going to bring him on as well, but oh well. Too late. I probably saw the message late. Oh well. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Harvey Barnes. He's going to be a threat. Um, so Romero, and this is what I mean. Like, we obviously, we've obviously got an issue right here because uh, I, think, and, I, think you've fake, I think you've fake news on Harvey Barnes. I saw um, on um, Gordon. Gordon. I, just, I looked. I just looked. He played in the last game. He like, did play in the last game. But yeah, I thought. Did, not. did he get? Excited, his, did he get his red card rescinded? No, and I, I think maybe they've had, they've had. They've had. They've had. It, they had. It, they had a game in between. Like oh, in okay. game, yeah. may, I think he maybe missed, or maybe I don't know. Or maybe he missed the midweek one. Yeah, they had Everton. They had Everton, didn't they? Yeah, no, he, he played. That. that was didn't he play that? No, nah, he didn't. He didn't play he the didn't Everton play that. game. That's no. what he was suspended for. I can't show this arrow. I wanted to do this arrow, but it's not. It's not now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you're gonna see Harvey Barnes. He's ah, got, he he's avoided. Got... He avoided a ban. Hmm. Oh, is he it? Avoided, oh, yeah, yeah, he avoided it. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna see Harvey Barnes, and I don't know if Isaac's gonna stay completely central. If they're gonna interchange uh, between Harvey Barnes and Isaac, if they're gonna swap positions at times. But um, yeah, that's why we've got Mickey Van the Ven there. He's gonna have to be on job in that game because those are the the main threats in my opinion. But apart from that, Grimerich obviously on job. Um, he's gonna be busy bodied. He's gonna be causing trouble. He's quite physical. So, but between Hoiberg and and and, and Bentancur, uh, Bentancur's got that living the vida loca, the Latin inside him. So he's going to be able to co like counteract the Brazilian, and then Hoiberg's there. They're missing so many players, so many key first teamers. I can't see um, Newcastle giving us that much trouble. I think they'll give us a lot of possession, and I think we'll have. They'll, they'll try and catch us on the counter. Yeah, right? they're gonna try and catch us in the counter attack. That's more. That's all I can say. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not really gonna go into deep into it, but um, I'm gonna leave that till tomorrow because team tactics. Team tactics is on. I'm saving it for him more. Or less. <laughs> you know I'm saying it's gonna be interesting. Uh, before, yeah. Uh, big up to David Shy. Said, love this great smooth analysis. Well done, you guys. So thank, thank you for you. the super thank chat. You. I didn't get time to read it out earlier. Yeah. Um, Adrian. Where are you going to be for the next week? <laughs> so, 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 I think someone's followed you on your streams all week, so I bet you better <laughs> All <talk> right. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those weeks where, like, you know, it's just been about a lot, you know? So you go from famine to feast, but you guys are all, always on the feast table, so uh, you know, <laughs> you're always busy. Ash is always doing his stats and... Uh, <clears throat> Is that is that is that it? No, nothing, nothing, nothing well, no, from me, Marla. No, no. <laughs> it's like Ash is Ash is busy. I don't know about you two bozos. No, <laughs> it, you know. no everyone's got a busy work life, and Jay's yeah, yeah. getting a new job as an auctioneer. <laughs> 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 He's going to bounce the price up, everyone. Like you know, that's what well, they should but... do: player auctions. You know, what I mean, that'd be fun. Mm. <clears throat> thanks, yeah. Big thanks to Ben Kaufman earlier for being on as well. Yeah. Um, Kaufman, yeah, make sure you go over there and subscribe to him. I'll put it in the description later. Jay, what are you up to for the next week or so? I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm I feel like I've done I've, I've done my pod work for the week. I've, I've, been, on, I've been on a few pods this I've been on yeah, you were, you were on Holly yeah, yesterday. I, 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 yeah, I was like never a foul. Well, you know? It's Holly Hotspurs. I've done this. Um, so yeah, I think I think I'll just I'll, how can they miss you if you don't go away? So I think that's me done for the week. <laughs> I like um, that. You know, like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, obviously, leave them wanting more. People are like, oh, it's nice to see you again. Mm -hmm. Oh, lovely. Or yeah, they, they might want to see the back of you. You go on, you go on every stream for a week, and then, uh, like, three days later, it's like, hey, Jay, you got shit takes. Oh, Jay, oh, shut up, Jay. So, He's back. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on. Apologies for my time. Yeah, That's thanks for the invite, guys. Yeah, no, no worries, man. We were listening to the game. So it's yeah. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was it's all good now. And um and what about you? What about you, Marlon? What do you have planned for the rest of the week? No one ever asks, no one ever asks the host. I wanna I wanna flip this back on you. 
No, good point. Um, I'm doing nothing. I've had I've had my week this week. Um, so I've had my last word on Spurs. A lot. Okay. All my all, all my chat. All my people in my group for the match reaction were fuming with me because I cancelled it. <laughs> oh, he's, he's like, see you later, boys. I'm going to have some fun chasing Robbie and trips and, <laughs> and people like oh, yeah, that from yeah. Arsenal TV and go and give them some stick. Yeah, I love it. Hey, you guys that supported me on my way up. We made it. Well, <laughs> so I'm back on Saturday with them all. <laughs> to make sure I do the back reaction. Well, well. otherwise I'll be fuming. They better turn up this time because I have to do West Ham by myself. Uh, um, yes. <laughs> so I'll be back Saturday. Excellent, um, excellent. But yeah, Ash, rivals. Yes, uh, <laughs> you know how it goes, man. Rivals. Um, Anymore, all panel shows. Rivals is, is a hot con. It's, it's hard to it's get a seat on Rivals. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's, 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 should be toast. Should be toasting that one. <laughs> Brother, it's, it's not easy. I, like, yeah, it's not easy. I'm not going to lie. People are like, let me in! Yeah, people want to get on in it. Like, people Your name's got to be on the list now, Jake, man. <laughs> <laughs> Even I can't get in. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Yeah, <laughs> Well, it's been meaning to come on as well. I'm gonna, like, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. But yeah, um, rivals, we do what we do, man. And uh, again, it's, rivals is going to be hot. Yeah, it will be hot. It will it's it's, it's, it's going to be fire for the next couple of weeks now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next, until the end of the season, I mm. think we're going to go hard. Uh, pause. But yeah. Um, yeah, me, panel wise, yeah, like you guys, I've got too much on. So um, hopefully, I'm taking a little break. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a lie to be fair. I think I'm on Thursday as well. Never a foul. I think I'm yeah. on that. So uh, make sure, so yeah, people, I'll try and well, play after Newcastle, so you've got a two week break. You won't yeah. know what to do with yourself while well, Arsenal got four oh, games to play. Mate, you you don't it. understand, right? Like, I'm getting messages nearly every other day, right? Ah, oh, Ash, do you want to do this? I've been watching you for a while. This, yeah, that, yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, sitting yeah. there going, No, yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, why? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's good. there's a lot there's a lot of um there's so much spurs content out there just don't ask Jay to give you a prize for anything yeah. it? no it's it's it's, 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 <laughs> it's more like there's, there's something for everyone yeah. so it's like i just look at it from the point i'm not at this it's like uh the hills have eyes sometimes some of the podcasts it's like you got I don't go down there. Don't go. Don't be going down there. So you got to be a bit careful sometimes. So I know, I know I know where like this is a great thing because obviously I, I like disagreements and I, I, like, conflict is good for these kind of shows, different points of view. But like like I said, there's there's certain paths that I don't go quite down because it's a little bit more. You know, it is less. It's it's less analytical. This is a really good analytical show mixed with a good good level of. Shamelessness. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you're part of that shamelessness. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, all good, all good. Ashley, yeah, you're never a foul, but you'll probably be back next week. Next week, Tuesday. Rivals tomorrow. Thursday, never a foul. And then back next week. But both of you, Jay, Adrian, and Ben earlier, thank you so much for coming on. Nah, Everybody. Nice pleasure. Pleasure, mate. Thank you to everybody in the chat today. Again, as always, you make this show happen. Mm-hmm. Um, Pierre, I'll, I'll let you do that in a minute, Ash. Um, I'm just trying to remember who done our first super chat now. Mm-hmm. David Shire, thank you for your super chat. And who else was it? Uh, oh, here we go. Ah, YGG Dressel, thank you for your super chat as well earlier. Much appreciated. All helps us out. Thank you very much. Ash, do you want to do the last part? Because you're good at this part. Yeah, man. Just as always, guys, it helps us get out there, get seen, and um, we're not a big channel, but every little like helps. So please like, share, and subscribe. And um, yeah, if you do enjoy it, put a no- notification on so when you know it's on next, it comes up straight away. But yeah, tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's let's try and grow this channel a little bit. And yeah, man, have a lovely week, guys. Spurs, we won. We're three one up. We're fourth in the table, mm-hmm. and this is the first season. This is like the first mm-hmm. seven months, man. So, in big and we trust. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're taking my line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, oh. that's it for me, and that's it for me. Yeah, I, I like it. Uh, Chat GPT. What other words <laughs> do we have for trust? <laughs> <laughs> 
thesaurus quickly now. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna change it this week. In Van Ven, I trust you've taken my heart, oh, mate. Well, You'll be you've <clears> taken <throat> it from Yan. So Yans, we trust. You. Come on, you Spurs. And come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs.